Welcome to the Saturday Football Show on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. I'm Peter Martin. Tam McManus is with me on this Saturday afternoon to bring you all the reaction to the half-time and full-time results in the Scottish Premiership, Championship, League One and League Two in Scotland. And we'll also look at what's happening down south in English Premier League as well. You can interact with us. You can click on to our YouTube channel, the subscribe button, and join the football family. Here's the halftime of the Scottish Premiership for you to look at. It's Hearts 1, St Johnston 0, Josh Ginelli with the goal there. Livingston 1, Hibernian 2, Nubly scored for Livingston. 2 from Johan has given Lee Johnson's side the edge. Rangers 3-0 up in Kilmarnock. Ross County 0, Motherwell 0, and of course Dundee United against Aberdeen. is a 6 o'clock kickoff, and let's not forget also that St Mirren against Celtic takes place on the Sunday. So, what about Ibrox? Let's get the half-time assessment from our reporter, Adam Binney. Half-time here at Ibrox Stadium. It's Rangers 3, Kilmarnock now. Rangers have responded brilliantly to Derby Day disappointment last week with goals from Sakala, Golton and Tavernier giving the Rangers fans something to cheer about this week. They got the opening goal very quickly after just six minutes. A corner was sent into the box. It was Barisic played a nice short corner to Cholak, lays it off for Cantwell, Cantwell takes an attempt, blocked, he has another one whilst he's falling down on his left foot, blocked again, then Cholak tries it, blocked, eventually it falls to Conor Goldson at the back post just to sweep it home, fourth time lucky to give Rangers that one goal advantage, they then claimed a second through Fashion Sakala who should have actually scored two goals himself before this, so uh, a great diagonal pass from Todd Cantwell, managed to pick out I think it was Antonio Cholak eventually in the box after a poor headed clearance from Kilmarnock found the feet of the Rangers striker. He laid it off unselfishly to Sakala who smashed it into the back of the net. And then in the 45th minute Rangers were awarded a penalty. It was Nico Raskin played a lovely one too with Fashion Sakala. He got himself into the box, looked to try and play a ball back across goal. It looked, although it looked as though it did uh, hit off the arm of Dorset. Player didn't really claim for it, fans didn't really notice at the time. But upon second viewing, Willie Collum looked at the VAR monitor and decided that penalty was in order. James Tavernier, as he does, stepped up to take the resulting penalty kick and slotted it into the bottom left corner. So half time here at Ibrox Stadium, Rangers Street, Kilmarnock now. Well, Tom, if you want a response, that is the response from uh, Michael Beale's side. Yep, that's the response that he'd have been looking for um, after the disappointment of the cup final uh, to come out and, and get an early goal against Kilmarnock and get the fans back on side again, and they've done that. And uh, by all accounts, it's been an absolute one-way traffic the first half, and it could have been five or six. So, listen, I don't think he's had that complete performance yet at Ibrox in terms of a 90-minute performance. And if he does get that today, come on, it might be in the end of a, of a six or seven. Yeah, OK, we'll find out about that. Um, does that heap pressure on Derek McInnes again? He's, he's just got to try and save Kilmarnock at the end of the I season. I don't think they're going to be judged on those games. Rangers, Celtic yeah. away. I think uh, their home form that is going to... He actually said it the other day himself. Their home form would be top six and their, their away form would be relegation. So I think he realises that they're going to rely heavily on their home form. Yeah, OK. What was happening up there at Dingwall? We were looking at that match with great interest. It was uh, Ross County uh, taking on Motherwell. Kerry Pollock is there for us. Half time here in Dingwall as it stands and the break it's still nil nil but both sides have had opportunities starting with Ross County. Firstly George Harmon's volley was denied by Liam Kelly and then Eamon Brophy had the biggest chance he cut inside, took it onto his right and hit a powerful low shot towards the Motherwell goal but it was denied again by Liam Kelly. But for Motherwell, John Obika came close on two occasions. Firstly from a long pass from the middle of the park he couldn't direct his header towards the goal and then secondly it was Max Johnson who crossed the ball in from the right and Obika side-footed it over the bar, but Motherwell's biggest chance came just on the edge of this first half. It was Van Veen on the edge of the 18-yard box, had a powerful strike and forced Ross Laidlaw to palm it away. Hopefully some goals to come in this second half. I'll have another update for you at field time as it stands so far here in Dingwall. Ross County nil, Motherwell nil. Yeah, I think Kerry's looking for double time, Tam. She's not happy. She's had to go there with nil nil. Oh, that way for nil nil. That's a disaster for her. Uh, so hopefully she gets a couple of goals in the second half and a bit of Excitement, she likes freezing as well, but uh, listen, I think that was always going to be a tight game. I actually fancy goals in the game, which is the complete opposite, but they might get them in the second half, but it's always going to be tight between two teams at the bottom. Yeah, not great football to watch for Kerry. Let's hope that's going to be good in the second half. What about Tynecastle? You always get goals there. Here's Patrick Mullen. Hot up here at Tynecastle Park, and it's Hearts 1, St Johnson nil. The only goal of this one came in the 20th minute. A strike from outside the box from Josh Canelli found its way into the bottom left-hand corner. 
to give Hearts the deserved lead. Both Lawrence Shankland and Stephen May have been causing all sorts of problems for their respective teams, but it's the only reason it's 1-0 is due to both of the goalkeepers. Zander Clark and Remy Matthews have been on tip-top form, keeping this one at bay. But at half-time at Tancastle, it's Hearts 1, St. Johnson 0. Yeah, and uh, well done to Patrick because uh, whoever actually came up with, I thought they had the perfect chance to design the perfect uh, press box at Tynecastle with that new stand, but that stupid bit of perspex <laughs> just annoys the life out of me. And in the winter when it's raining, Tom, it comes in, it comes in and it belts off. Yeah, you. it wasn't it wasn't the best design uh, for, for the press at Hearts, but uh, you know it sounds as if it's quite an open game. You know, looked at the stats, St Johnson very much in it as well. Um, I think the next goal obviously is going to be vital. I think if Hearts get it, then it's game over for St Johnson. But if St Johnson get it, then you never know. But uh, you know, Hearts obviously in the driving seat after the first half. Yeah, OK. Um, we will be uh, heading to uh, the uh, Tony Macaroni Arena very shortly to hear from Ali Graham on that match. Uh, also, we'll be speaking to Claire Kinnear. She's there getting ready for the match at Tannadice, uh, Dundee United against Aberdeen, which should be an interesting one for Jim Goodwin. Just uh, surreal what's been happening over the last uh, 30 days and more. Uh, there's a penalty for Ross County in that match against Muddle, so suddenly there is a bit of excitement for Kerry uh, to report on at the end of the game. And incidentally, uh, with all the reporters at these matches, we will bring you the reaction from the manager and the players as well. We bit a banter between myself and Tam. I always enjoy a Saturday afternoon. There's so much that we can discuss uh, along the way, uh, Tam, including, of course, should Aidan McGeady hang up his boots? You can give us your thoughts. Uh, can Celtic go all the way undefeated uh, from uh, now until the end of the season uh, with the Scottish Cup in the trophy cabinet, or is somebody going to upset the apple cart? Um, Ryan Fraser at Newcastle on his way out. Does he have an attitude problem? Where's Kieran Tierney going next season? Mikey Johnson's future's up in the air. And Davy Malloy sent us a lovely picture of himself at the Etihad Stadium, and he says, I'm here watching Man City defeating Newcastle two goals to nil and he said the atmosphere is dreadful no singing whatsoever <laughs> apart from at one moment they went come on City come on City and I'm thinking to myself you could get, honestly you get a ticket there no problem yeah I think that's that's fans that are just I think spoilt with success and you know watching all these brilliant players I think Man City when they were back at was it Main Road I think that was their, their spiritual home you know they went in there and they were up and down, you know, they've been down the leagues at one point. I remember Paul Dickoff scoring the goal in the playoffs to get them back up. You know, but now they've they've got so much money, you know, they're just sitting there expecting that they might wipe the floor with teams four fives and the atmosphere's poor. I've never been at the at the stadium, but everyone I hear that goes to it thinks, you know, it's like a library. It's, there's no atmosphere at all. So you know, maybe it's just that big stadium they're struggling to fill it actually as well. Yeah, I think the last time I was in the Etihad Stadium, it was actually Rangers losing to Zenit St Petersburg, mm -hmm. uh, to be honest with you. Um, what happens at Livingston? At least Ali Graham's got a few goals. Here's what he makes of them after that 45 minutes and beyond. Half time here at Anmerville, it's Livingston 1, Hibernian 2. The host started brightly with Nicky Devlin going close in opening minutes. Stefan Omiongo then had a hook shot that went inches past, but the nine minutes they took the lead. Morgan Boy's ball through to Joel Nubley and he fired high past Ben Marshall. Hibbs grew into the match with Ewan Henderson going close on 19 minutes, but it was Ellie Yuhan who slipped the offside trap and slotted home from 12 yards to equalise. Yuhan again was on hand in 37 minutes when a scramble in the box fell to his left foot and he steered it home. Half time at Aldendale, it's Livingston 1, Hibernian 2. Well, uh, absolutely brilliant to have Ali on with us as well, um, just giving us that half-time report. He'll be there with a full-time report as well. Um, and the good news is uh, Ali looks as if he's more uh, than uh, catered for the, the weather. He's roasting. Look, he's got three layers on. He always takes about three layers and a big jacket as well. I don't think we have to worry about him. No, it's, uh, that's, that's one of the coldest stadiums actually I've ever been at, uh, the Tony Macaroni. But as I said, great, great first half for Hibs. You know, go, go a goal behind, you know, have to show a bit of character. And uh, Ellie Yuhan, who I've been critical of, of in the past uh, for his goal scoring abilities, he seems to have struck form in the last you know three or four weeks. He's scoring a lot of goals now. He's adding goals to his game, which he's got good skill, Tom. He's a good player. He yeah. is a good player. Uh, the only thing I had against him is his, his goal, his goal return. I think he'd one goal in his first twenty-two or twenty-three appearances for Hibs, and uh, I think he's got five or six uh, now in, in his last maybe six or seven games. So 
he certainly came onto a game. Uh, Hibbs missing Nisbet, missing, missing Boyle, and they needed somebody to come in and fill that void for goals, and he seems to be the man at the minute. Yeah. Uh, the one great thing about the Saturday afternoon time that I thoroughly enjoy is obviously trying to give as many of you the scores as possible, and then of course the interaction on here, especially when you get especially when you get reporters, just because Scottish people I don't really think of any great sympathy. Uh, I mean, I can say that because you know I, I hosted the Falkirk dinner last night, and you know you've got to you've got to play to the crowd, so I just leathered every one of them, and and here we've got uh, Joseph McGonigal he says the empty had which you can't argue yeah. with we've all been saying this about uh, that stadium and their fans as well um, and I can tell you there's a goal uh, Partick Thistle 2 Wraith Rovers 0 so suddenly Chris Doolan he's, oh, he's getting something out of him Brian Graham again popping up with the goal from I think Ruffy thought his legs had gone Brian Graham but he's not and I can tell you that Ross County penalty incidentally has been overturned uh, there was a VAR check in that one and it's now no longer a penalty um, and I I can tell you, uh, <laughs> Alan Woods says, <laughs> Big Ali, doing his absolute best. Alan Woods, no sympathy, says, has that guy just learned to read? I mean, honestly, I mean, that's just bad, isn't it? It's, it's you know? actually, I've done that before. And, uh, oh, you've had a howler, I've haven't done, you? I've done that before, but the BBC, the radio, was, I think the radio's a lot easier. You can yeah. get away with it. I think when you're on the camera, and you're, it's, I think it's a bit more difficult because you know, people will, will comment on it, but the radio, you can get away with it, but... Uh, I'd say the big alley's just starting and he's, he's, he's better than he was last week yeah I remember one of our uh, oh, thanks for that Tom <laughs> he's better than he was last week <laughs> no, I didn't, I didn't you, sounded, than you sounded like Bruce Forsyth here <laughs> you're so much better than last week's <laughs> audience um, yeah um, I tell you Chelsea have scored one nothing up on Leeds he mm. needs a win today he does he's under serious pressure um, I think he's have lost to Leeds today you know, that could have been curtains for him um, he's only in the door as well so hopefully hopefully he gets a run of results I know he's He's getting abuse, death threats, and all that. You know, yeah. from from people. You know, I think he comes across as a decent fella. Yeah, and we know Billy Reid as well. So I, I hope he gets starts to get a few results. Same here. Um, championship: Air United one, Inverness Caledonian Thistle one, uh, Cove Rangers nil, Dundee one, Paddock Thistle two, Wraith Rovers nil, Queens Park two, Morton mm. nil. A big result. For uh, them. Three of the big teams there are, are, are producing the, the the points. It looks like. Yep, I think Dundee, obviously, that was a, a shocker for them during the week. Um, they won the up away to Cove, but that was a big game, Queen's Park Morton. I think if Morton won that, um, they were right back in it. But you know, my mate's actually at the game, and he sent me one word uh, for the first half, and it was doing. Mm. So Queen's Park, they were absolutely battered in the first half, 2 nothing. So uh, Morton need to find something in the second half, or else... I think they can just try and concentrate on the playoffs. Well, I think a lot of people have been speculating on Jack Fitzwater's future. Uh, I don't think there's any doubt about it. Um, there's speculation that he could be off from Livingston in the in the summer, but he's off the park now. He's been sent off. So Livingston down to 10 men. I think they're up against it now. Um, they have a good record against Hibs, especially at Almond Vale, um, but it's not going to happen today, I don't think, because they're down to 10 men. Hibs have that goal advantage. They're 2-1 up. Another man sent off against Hibs. It's incredible the amount of times there's been somebody sent off against Hibs this season somebody could, somebody could maybe give us the stats on there but if that had been Celtic and Rangers it would be a conspiracy theory but nobody's really looking into no, it in any great Hibs. deal um, as far as the League 1 is concerned I can tell you Dunfermline 1 Alloa 0 uh, Kelty Hearts 0 Edinburgh 1 uh, Montrose 2 Clyde 0 and Queen of the South 2 Airdrionians 1 so um, again good performance there from Marvin Bartley's side and I can tell you Queen of the South have just gone 3-1 up in that match now Kieran McKeck he has the goal can I just say I did say to did say to everybody last night I was talking to John McGlynn I've got a lot of time for him I think he's a really good coach um, and uh, I did say to him you know Peter Header bought them their forum's poor Bobby and I said you'll Jonathan. easily you'll bat I was at all the Falkirk people are there I said you'll easily batter them which always gets a cheer you know you do that yeah. whatever you are and, yeah, they, and it's nil nil <laughs> 51 <laughs> minutes gone and they haven't got a goal um, in Scottish League 2 Annan 2 Stenhouse Muir 1 uh, East Fife 1 4 for 1 Elgin City nil, Bonnie Rig Rose nil. They're, they've been having an hour since we spoke there Tom haven't they uh, Sterling Albion 2 Albion Rovers 2 and Stranraer nil, Dumbarton 1 that's how it looks as far as the English Premier League Arsenal need to get their skates on here they're a goal down to Bournemouth yeah inside the first minute so plenty of time obviously to get back into the game but Man City putting the pressure on uh, winning the early kick off to, to cut the gap again so 
Listen, you, you'd fancy if Arsenal could get a goal with 20 to 25 minutes to go, they'd be going to win the game, but yeah. you, need, you need a goal quickly. Yeah, and Kieran Tierney looks as if he could be off in the summer. I think Arsenal want 25 million. Yeah, he's, he's too good, Peter, isn't he? To be sitting on the bench or sitting in the stand, he's, yeah. he's a top player. Uh, Newcastle obviously interested, uh, and I think all and the I big. I think he'd be great there, would you know? Yeah, all the big clubs. Um, I actually think Arsenal might rue letting him go. I, I think it's difficult because you've got Zinchenko there who's. World class for me. I think he's a fantastic player. Yeah. Um, is it because do you think maybe it's because of his versatility that he can play in the middle as well, Zinchenko? Yeah, I think he's obviously. I think he's a wee bit better going forward. Um, he fits into Arsenal's system, and Arsenal have been really good this season. So he's, he's kind of kept the same back four, back three, whatever it is. So, but Kean's Kean's far too good. Yeah, I think he can go and play with be a Spurs or a Newcastle or somebody else at the top end of the league. Yeah, Ryan says he needs Elgin to win for 300 quid. That's when you really start to panic, isn't it? You're like Elgin. squeaky bum, squeaky bum time, you know, you're Aye, saying I yourself. I hope we win for you, I hope we win. Yeah, 300 quid. It's kind of a makes your Saturday night. Uh, the reason I say that to you, uh, and it's Arsenal nil, Bournemouth 2. No, wow, well, that I've is... Just, you know, I've got Arsenal in the equipment, he's just took great gleam. Yeah, this is you. One, of our, one of our digital journalists is just <laughs> rubbing his hands. <laughs> Um, I have to say, I'm looking oh, at the... Shocker. Uh, it is a shocker. Um, uh, one of the guys that was... Two guys I used to hang... Well, I still hang about one of them. The other one, uh, not so much. But I still see him uh, every now and then. We used to all go out together. And what we said to him was... And he was a big gambler. He was the type of guy that gamble on a fly and how many steps it would take <laughs> to the roof. Um, but he used to say to us, if he wins anywhere at the dogs or uh, on the, the, the games, he would say, I take you out. So we've been hanging about the year when we were 18 onwards for about three or four years and he said if I win I take it to honestly in about three years I, I, my, me and my mate must have taken him out and paid for everything <laughs> for about three years but to his credit when he did win Aye. you know there was That's there was a point night. of no return That's it was absolutely fantastic um, it was like uh, it was like what's that movie where uh, it's like the hangover it's as simple as that, you know, without the tiger. Um, anyway, go for Falkirk. What did I tell you? Yeah, you go, Falkirk never in doubt. Scott, never, in doubt. never in doubt. And uh, that's one nothing then for Falkirk. Yeah. Uh, and Bob says, what about last night's game, Peter? Um, oh, you wouldn't have seen it. Did you talk about Hamilton or Broth? Yeah. Oh, it was a, it was a shocking game. Um, dodgy red card, Dick Campbell losing his rag on the side. Yeah. Gave... Somebody the Vicky yeah. and get caught in the BBC cameras, which yeah. is absolutely <laughs> tremendous. <laughs> Al Lamont saying I would like to apologise for that inopportune yeah. moment of the camera. Yeah. He was giving it to somebody who's obviously giving Dick a bit of pelters and uh, finished nil nil. But it wasn't a great game. But yeah. I think the the best part of it was seeing Dick Campbell absolutely losing the losing the heat. Yeah, the side. And to be fair, by the way, you know, um, go for Kilmarnock. Rangers 3, Kilmarnock 1, Dossett has got a, a goal back for Kelly, whether that's going to be enough or not, or viewed as a consolation is up to yourself, you can tell us what you think. Um, of course, we've been in the company of Dick when he does actually do uh, the after dinner stuff, and he's quite funny by the way, but uh, I, I don't know which way you want to do this. Some people say that people who swear have a, you know, a real intelligence. My English teacher used to say, a person who swears suffers from a lack of vocabulary, yeah. so I'm wondering how you would sum up Dick, because his after dinner Oh, stuff. Well, it's just, much up there, oh, it just littered with it, isn't it? He is funny though. Ah, he is, he is, but he was given the fourth official pelters last night on the on the telly. Uh, so I wasn't surprised to get sent off. But it was a good point for both and then they, were, they played for 70 minutes with, with 10 men, but it wasn't a great game. Yeah, Cove Rangers nil Dundee 2. So I think Lee Ashcroft's goal will put the tin lid on it for Cove Rangers in this one. Dundee look all yeah, a good know, bet. Listen, I think Dundee, are, they need to keep winning now. I think they're four points behind Queen's Park. Queen's Park. Morton just pulled a goal back, uh, so back in the game, but you know, Dundee need to keep winning games to, to keep tabs yeah. on them. I'm looking here, and I quite like a lot of people who uh, email in and text us and put messages on, and we always try and read out as many as possible. I like William Smith's uh, thinking here, Tom. He says, Peter, you should send Tom uh, to do the MLS games. You know, just send you over to America, because you played in America. I did play um, in America. I don't think I've mentioned it on this show before, but I did actually play two spells in America. Yeah, and it would be great if we went... Can you imagine us going live to you? By the way, you need to, you need to go into YouTube and... Uh, Go into money, a couple of my goals for Colorado and listen to the commentary. Is that I, right? had a, I had a ball, I had a, scored one for about 35 yards, and the commentators said I scored from way downtown. 
Is that right? It's, a <laughs> it's, on, it's on YouTube somewhere. Yeah. Uh, I'm and gonna, then another one, another one, another one. They call they call a chicken wing battle scene. You were tussling my guy. Yeah. Can I show the show the code? Called a chicken wing battle. Uh, the commentary, the commentary was, great. was brilliant. Yeah. Ruffy tells you a great story when he was playing for Orlando, and he says, "I, you know, they just at the early stages of MLS uh, as well. Started in the NASL, that doing one pelly and all that played in. Well, I think it might have been just after, just after that. that yeah. And uh, he said, you know. He says the crowd's all in there, and Ruffy could kick the ball a long way, and uh, he got the ball edge of the box. Boom! Hits it right over to the edge of the the other guy's box, and all he could hear from the crowd was "Way to go, keeper! Way to go!" <laughs> <laughs> Which is brilliant. It's like one of those classic movies. My first ever game for Colorado. Uh, first ever home game actually. Uh, five minutes into the game, home debut. I'm, I'm wanting to make an impression. So we had a guy, boy Terry Cook that played the Man City. Oh yeah, he was a good player. Great yeah. delivery. Yeah. Worked a great ball. Left peg? No, right peg, right wing. Was he? In the wing, right peg. And he worked a ball alone hard. Right was the, who was the wee guy that played with Man City? The baldy head, he was the left hand side. Oh. That wasn't Terry Cook. Donny, Danny Teato or something? Was that him? No, it was, no, it was another guy. He was, a, he was a wee hardy boy who played for Man City. I'll, I'll get on to that. Uh, by the way, Thistle are 3 nothing up now. Um, Scott I Tiffany. Tiffany's going to be a good signing in the summer. Uh, for someone, yeah, I, I'm surprised somebody hasn't taken a, a punt. Aye, so, so he whips a ball across six yards out, I, I blaze it over the bar. Absolutely, yep. sit five just, minutes gone, five minutes into my home debut. I'm right. expecting the fans to begin my pelters. Now, oh, here's unlucky, yeah. unlucky. I thought. I could play here for the next 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that was for him, Zan Polka, or somebody's been like, you're rubbish, get Give me your pelt. Uh, and I can tell you, there's uh, Arsenal getting a goal back. Uh, I tell you, I bet you Arsenal win 3 2. Tom, it's well, one, you're right, it's, you're right. it's Arsenal well, one more right, than two. Um, and I can tell you, Hibs are now three one up. Uh, so Chris Cadden's added in there. Remember, Livingston are down to ten men. Jack Fitzwater sent off in a that lot game. Of sent off this season, wasn't it? Off the top of my head, I only got one sent off at uh, Easter Road early in, early in the game, and Hibs won four 0 A man sent off against Rangers yeah. last week, week before. You've got discipline, maybe a discipline problem in it. Yeah, strangely enough, they lost the last three games yeah. and this one is going to be the fourth consecutive one at first, a time. First little kind of blip. rough spell for, for Martindale, I would say. Yeah, absolutely. He's looking to try and get them into that top six and certainly when you think about his budget as well. Uh, Josh Janelli's added a second goal for Hearts in that match, so they look as if they're done and dusted in that one too. Yeah, I think the Hearts were always going to win that game today and it was important for Hibs, you know, just to stay on the coattails. I think Livingston away is a, a tough game. But I think Hibs have won that now, and uh, they still stay five points behind because I think Hibs have got Celtic Rangers in the next two games. Yeah. So if Hibs can come out of it, you wouldn't expect Hibs to get too many points out of them, to be honest. But if Hibs can just stay in touch with Hearts and get this run of games at the road, then you never know. With all due respect, uh, Tam, I, I, I think Hearts are still good enough. I, I do as well, but I'm just surprised that Hibs are even in the shake-up. You know, we've seen them earlier in the season, they were, yeah. they were terrible. Um, but now... They've just got a wee bit of momentum, Peter. I think that's going to be seven games unbeaten, five wins and two draws. So, you know, they're just starting to, to hit a wee run of form. Uh, they've got a good settled partnership at the back now. They seem to have absolutely been flying since Portis left. I know Portis is a good player, but yeah. Hibs have no look back since he left. So and we, ha think, and we he, haven't heard from him. No, he's not been a, I don't think he's been a big mess at all for Hibs. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, they just need to keep grinding results out like today. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thanks to so many of you for interacting with us. I think a lot of people also are enjoying the fact that we are giving you the chance to win some prizes. And I almost forgot to tell you about it, but uh, Adam has the details of a competition which we will end at the end of today's programme and then pick a winner and tell you about it on Monday. It's another fantastic competition from PLZ Soccer. Rangers fans, Celtic fans recognise this jersey. Of course, you've played against them both in European football recently. It's the jersey of RB Leipzig. You can win this by answering the following simple question. What does the RB stand for in RB Leipzig? If you want to double your chances of winning, don't forget to hit the subscribe button on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. Good luck. Yeah, good luck indeed with the competition. We always like to throw out a wee quiz question, and this was an interesting one because uh, there is a stat uh, flying about at the moment where uh, James Ward-Prowse, who plays for mm -hmm. Southampton, he's a really good player, and amazingly, you know, he scores so, cr so many crucial goals. Not enough, I think, to save Southampton this season, but um, he scores free kicks, and he's closing in on David Beckham's record. So that was my question. How many free kicks has David Beckham scored in the English Premier League? It's a good one, isn't it? Ten. Ten? Okay. Um, 
how many free kicks has David Beckham scored in the English Premier League? It's a record which James Ward Prowse is closing in on. Give us your answer on that. Good luck with the competition as well. We've got lots of people hitting the subscribe button, which doubles your chances of being in with a chance to win that Leipzig top. And we also have lots of other prizes coming up as well. Um, we have sent our reporters out on the Champions League hunt uh, and quite a lot of them have been, uh, yeah. we've mentioned to them, look, bring something back so that we can uh, give it away as a prize. And next week's is really unusual because I thought long and hard about it, Tam, and I thought to myself, He's such a divisive character that should I give away this hoodie which has his name on the back with a pendant with it. But I've decided to go full steam ahead and uh, let's see what we get from it. So Some will wear it with pride and some will probably burn it. Yes, I think that is a fair <laughs> assessment of where that's going with that one. Anyway, uh, to anyone who's a guest, and there's a few who have actually uh, put their guesses in for the free kicks for David Beckham. David Beckham was, was world, world class, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. I was lucky enough, obviously, to play against him over in America. And yeah. uh, you play play against him I in did, America. I did. I played wow. against him twice. We beat him four nothing, and we uh, lost four two. Yeah, three two to them. Um, did he put the usual bog standard cross? He was. The thing with MLS, I think it's still the same. Actually, it's a salary cap, so the best teams had all all players on equal kind of money. Right. He, he obviously took about seventy percent of that cap. He was there. Landon Donovan was there, and the rest of them were rubbish. Yeah. And they finished about second bottom of the league. Wow, and Beckham was he was just there for for the, for the money, wasn't he? In the lifestyle, he wasn't there to, to play. Yeah, I think we'll hopefully um, get a chance to uh, look ahead to that Dundee United against Aberdeen, and uh, I'm delighted to say that uh, we have got Claire Kinnaird who's ready for that game, Dundee United against Aberdeen. Uh, Claire, uh, let's ask you first of all. I, I just wonder what's going to be going through Jim Goodwin's mind. He's now the Dundee United manager. It's been a mental 33 days. I know it's been something just a little bit random anyway for him anyway to be sacked by one club and then uh, to be joining as the first side that's going to play against them to be fair. Uh, like you say Aberdeen left there 33 days ago uh, after the shot cup exit to Darville and then of course the thumping by Hibbs as well 6-0. When I spoke with him earlier this week he said that he was actually looking to be able to get a few rounds of golf in um, and that was what his future was looking like but this was an offer that he just couldn't turn, uh, turn down. Yeah, well, <laughs> Jim, clearly, that's what you call a whirlwind there. Great insight from Claire into his mentality. I'll go and play golf, and if something comes up, it comes up. Well, obviously, he's, he's still got his, his wee payoff tucked away with Aberdeen, uh, and he's, he's maybe just wanting a break for it, but listen, for him to get back in, I think, was, was brilliant for him personally. I think he'd have struggled to get a better club than Dundee United. Um, he now goes back in there. It's, it's a huge three months for him, his, his managerial career. I think if he, if he goes in there and keeps him up, then he can obviously go with his head held high and he's, he's repaired his reputation. If he goes in there and doesn't need to get relegated, I don't see where he, where he can go for there, I think. So it's, it's a huge three months for him. Yeah, you say a huge three months. Claire, it's a, it's a huge three games ahead for Jim Goodwin um, to try and suddenly get something out of that United side. Yeah, so obviously we've got Aberdeen today, Livingston and then St Mirren as well. Uh, of course, they're on a run of six defeats at the moment. So he's looking to obviously make an impact today, turn that around and effectively just stop relegation, hopefully. Fingers crossed on that because I don't know if you're aware of this, uh, Tam. Uh, it's not going to happen. I'm just assuring you of that, right? But uh, Claire is absolutely, uh, let me think of the word I can use, um, panicking. Yes, because there are other phrases that you and I would use. <laughs> Claire is panicking if Dundee United get out of that league because she suddenly thinks, who am I going to report on up in the... But Dundee could come up and Claire would be saved. I would. Uh, and also it'll be a Dundee derby in the, in the championship. Uh, <laughs> no, listen, I, I, I think the... the Premier League needs both clubs in it. I think obviously I played the Dundee and I played in the Dundee derbies. They're a big thing up there. You know, they're, they're a big occasion, a big game. Eh, a lot of passion, a lot of energy for the supporters up there. So I'd like to see Dundee United and Dundee in the, in the Premier League. And that could still happen, but equally, both could end up in the Championship next year. Yeah, absolutely. Um, listen, we're talking about Dundee United, Claire, but what about Aberdeen? Still no manager in place there at Pataudry. Yeah, Barry Robson's still in charge at the moment. Of course, he's uh, four games in, two wins, two defeats, but uh, the 
Chief Executive Alan Burrows, he did say this week that they were looking to get someone in place relatively quickly now, or as soon as possible anyway. Yeah, absolutely, I'm um, looking forward. I can tell you, um, I know Claire won't be interested, but it's two, two each now. Arsenal have equalised, I told you. I told you Arsenal would equalise. Um, listen, one last question to Claire that I actually haven't, I haven't put anything down uh, on this question. That you know, There's always questions that you like to ask um, just to get an insight in it. There's one that I didn't ask, Tam, that I feel as if I really should ask Claire, which is quite simply, uh, I don't know if it was 10 days ago, uh, we did a Zoom call together and she was standing there uh, just in front of her, our uh, stairs in our flat and uh, there was no carpet uh, and clearly the person who <laughs> <laughs> yeah, know, clearly the person who owned the flat before <laughs> her was a Dundee United fan because the wood was all painted tangerine oh, was it? oh I was howling by the way and I said to her, Claire you know do you want us to do a crowdfunding for the carpet come on Claire what's happening with the carpet in the hallway <laughs> Well, I'm still waiting for that crowdfunding that you promised me. I mean, I'm pretty sure it was a Dundee United supporter, but, you know, I lifted that carpet and I, I reckon it's been down for about 20 years. So I guess it just shows the, I don't know, the longevity of the fans that run through the city. <laughs> what a brilliant way to just dig our way out of that one there. But uh, yeah, the uh, quest to get as much money as possible to get on a hallway carpet. <laughs> brilliant. Um, listen, Claire will be there watching Dundee United against Aberdeen and giving us uh, the full time report across our social media. And also, she'll be getting the thoughts of the managers and the players that have played a key role in that game. Who's going to win it? Dundee United or Aberdeen? You can give us your thoughts. But well done to Claire. Great to see her there. First time she's actually been on without the pigtails as well, T uh, Tam. She, yep. she likes putting the pigtails on um, and uh, she's got about 300 woolly hats see, to keep they, herself they, warm. They are massively important, the woolly hats. So yeah. if, you, if you keep your head warm at a game, I always find if you keep your head warm, you're warm. Well, absolutely. I don't think she'll ever go cold up there in Tanadice. Um, brilliant. Uh, great to hear from Claire Kinnear, part of our team, part of our team of reporters, Tam, right across the Premiership uh, reporting in all the games. Yep, great. As I said, it's great for us to have people reporting you know, live for the game. You get a feel of how the game is going. Um, Rather than listening to the radio or whatever, so no, no, they're all they're all doing well at the minute, and uh, it's great for the Saturday show. You've got people out there at the games live. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, John Nicholson says, "Listen to wee fatty saying Arsenal would score," um, which is which is quite, it's quite, it's quite, it's quite it's quite good that he it's quite good that he said that because you see the thing about it is what John doesn't say, well I'm just about to say to you what John doesn't realise is coming from such a huge family he'll never break through the what I call the de the Death Star Shield Tom <laughs> because when you're brought up in a family when everybody canes each other you know I can take uh, seven sisters and two brothers that's mental isn't it was it? tennis yes yeah. Did you mind over telly? No, there was no, there was no television. <laughs> there was just an air raid to say that the planes were coming <laughs> overhead and then that was it. Um, I can tell you there's... Are you youngest or oldest? Youngest. Youngest of them all? Yes, yes. Calm your jets, Tom. <laughs> You've got that startled look. <laughs> uh, so, and the good thing is with John caning me there, uh, at least one of my sisters I know will give you a good leathering talk, John, if we ever uh, come across you at some point. Um... What's the goal? There's a goal coming in, uh, I can tell you, Tam. Uh, I think it's actually at Hearts. Yeah, Hearts have scored. It's 3-0. Mm -hmm. uh, George Grant has scored. And Motherwell have got a goal as well. Kevin Van Veen. Boy, did they need that. They um, go 10 points clear of bottom if they win that today. And that yep. was all, but uh, I think that would be them pretty, pretty much safe. You think so? I think so. I think 10 points is a big gap at this stage. Yeah, 10 points. Well, interesting time. Uh, you can give us your thoughts on that. Is that enough 10 points for Motherwell to be safe? Remember, they all go into that split after 33 games and then you have to wait and see uh, how they're going to perform against each other as well. Um, so uh, thanks to so many um, people who actually... Uh, come and chat to us on the uh, feed on YouTube and if you hit the subscribe button as well we really would be absolutely delighted with you joining the football family Tam and myself on a Saturday afternoon it's a bit more relaxed it's not really one of those afternoons where you're looking at the scores and you're thinking to yourself well let's have a wee bit of banter as well a wee bit of engagement Tam um, and also give people the chance to win uh, a few prizes here and there as well so uh, quick update on it all as far as the Scottish Premiership is concerned Hearts 3-0 up and St Johnston, uh, Hibs 3-1 up at Livingston, Livingston down to 10 men, Jack Fitzwater sent off Rangers 3-1 up in Kilmarnock they were 3-0 up and then Kelly got a goal back and it's Ross County 0 Motherwell 1, Van Veen who scored that goal 
to give uh, Stuart Kettlewell's side um, the lead for the moment. And although it must be interesting for him, he spent a lot of years up there at County and he, he'll know so many people, but he's up there now trying to prove again that he's got what it takes. He'll be, he'll be older, wiser, looked at various bits of coaching at different levels, at the youth level right through. So it could be a real bonus um, that he knows so much about uh, Motherwell and what he's got and what he can develop and what he can bring through from the youth in the academy. Yeah, listen, I think that uh, when you come in as a caretaker manager, you want to have a, an, an immediate impact. He's had that. I think this could be, what, 10 points out of 12. You know, if they win today, you know, three wins and a draw, it's, it's fantastic for him. Just when Motherwell looks as if they're in serious trouble, you know, he's come in, he, he seems to be guiding them away from the bottom of the league. So, no, brilliant for him. Uh, as I said, difficult place to go, Ross County. Won 4 nothing last week. You know, so, so to go up there and maybe get a, get three points would be a, a magnificent result for Motherwell. And as I said, it would just take them 10 points. I know they didn't have a couple of games in hand, but 10 points at this stage of the season is, is a fairly hefty gap. Yeah, it looks as if uh, Inverness through Henderson have managed to get the uh, second goal there. It's Air United 1, Inverness uh, 2, Air have a man sent off a corner after uh, 29 minutes. Um, so that's how it looks in the uh, Championship as well. Uh, elsewhere, Cove Rangers nil, Dundee 2, Partick Thistle cruising at the moment, 3-0 up on Wraith Rovers and Queen's Park still holding that edge. 2-1 and it'll be interesting to see them if they get up to the Premier League for the first time. The amateur status is long gone now. It's all about trying to give Owen Coyle a team that he can do something in the Premier League. They'll be, I'm, I'm really going to be interested in what they can provide if they yeah, win that I league. Yeah, I mean, obviously they're building the, the new stadium at Lesser Hamden. Yeah. Um, it doesn't look as if it's going to hold that many people, um, which, which might be an issue for them going into the Premier League. Um, I wonder if they would go back and maybe ground share with Hamden. You know, if your Celtic Rangers Hearts Sibs are coming. Yeah. You know, I, th I don't know how that would work, but there's a lot of rumours thinking uh, people saying, "Oh, they don't want to come up. It's too early for them to come up." But if you're a player in the Queen's Park, you really want to win the league. You want to get promoted and play in, play in the Premier League. So I don't, I take that with a pinch of salt that they don't want to come up and all that kind of nonsense. But yeah. No, I, I think they're, they're in the driving seat. They'll remain four points clear. But Dundee, Party Thistle now on their tails. And I think you'll find that they, it's, it's going to be between the three of them now. I think Air United have fell away in recent weeks, unfortunately. One of my old teams, they've fell away. Uh, and Morton, if they get beat today, you know, they, I think they go 10 points behind. So I think it's going to be about the, the, the top two, maybe Party Thistle. Yeah, Dunfermline 2 0 up on Alawa. Falkirk now 3 up on Peterhead. I thought they would win that one comfortably. Craig McGuffey has scored the third. Kelty Hearts 1, Edinburgh 2, Montrose 2, Clyde 0, and Queen of the South 3, Airdrionians 2. And what about that League 2? I'm just having a quick look at it. Annan 2 2 with Stenhouse Muir, East Fife 2 2 with Forfar, and Elgin and Bonnie Regrose haven't got a goal yet. Sterling Albion 3 2. El Elgin still. Oh, the LB boy's 300, 300 quid, by the way. I mean, he's absolutely panicking right now. You're sitting there saying to yourself, and this is the point, by the way, if they don't score and it ends nil-nil, you know, suddenly you think to yourself, OK, I've lost £300, but I'm going to have to replace that ornament that I smashed on the mantelpiece as well in rage, you know, <laughs> when I didn't get the result I was looking for. Uh, Stilling Albion 3-2 on Albion Rovers and De Martin leading Stranraer. Uh, by a goal to nil at Stranraer, so um, that could be a good result there as well. Um, I think Michael Beale would disappoint again, Peter. I think you, why we spoke about that ninety-minute performance. Um, Rangers very, very good first half, three nothing up. Then come out the second half, you know, come on, get the goal, and uh, you know they're looking as if they're going maybe win three one, but. You're expecting them to get, you know, a real hungry, a Celtic team three nothing up at half time would go and win five or six. In my opinion, I just think there's something still. Still to click at Rangers in terms of a 90 minute performance. Well, uh, you know, that's a different point. Mm. I don't think you'll be, I don't think you'll be too angry with it. And the reason why I think that is because Michael Beale is trying to get essentially as much as he can out of a group of players that are not his players. You know, um, so I think he'll be looking at it and saying to himself, I've come in, I've inherited a squad, I want to try and get something out of them, try and see who I'm going to keep, who I'm going to let go, and then I'll have to sign my own players, five or six of them. And interestingly enough, there's a banner that's been held at the, out at the Rangers game uh, from the fans. What do you make of this banner, Tam? Um, which is basically, after 55 titles, you took your eye off the ball 
time for change. And this is obviously the union bears. And remember, by the way, can I just quantify this by saying there's a lot of young people in there. Um, not that their, their opinion is any less, uh, you know, valid, valid than um, a, any of the older people. The Rangers fans just the same. But what I would say is there's a lot of individuals who put a lot of money and some haven't got their money out yet. And then time for change. Is there someone out there who's thinking Rangers are, uh, you know, a viable proposition that you can make money off? Listen, I think that the Rangers put all their eggs in the stop ten in a row ba uh, basket. I think that they spent money to stop ten in a row. They managed to do that, but they haven't really kicked on after that. I know they got to the, the European final, but in terms of winning trophies, Scottish Cup, you know, looks as if Celtic going to win the treble this season. So no, I, I think that Rangers need they need fresh investment, Peter. I think they need. I think under this current board and current ownership, you know, a lot of those those guys were wanting their money back at some point. You know, all the money they put in, you know, Rangers were miles behind Celtic. You know, they put a lot of money into top ten. They've done that, and they'll be wanting some money back when Rangers are starting to make a bit of money and, and sell some players on. So, I think Rangers fans would be desperate for somebody else to come in with deeper pockets because I think it's going to take that for them to go and compete with Celtic. Yeah, uh, Queen's Park 2, Morton 2, so there might be a slip up from Owen Coyle's side in that championship match. Uh, and quite a few people obviously have got their own thoughts on this. David Russell says there'll be more than four or five players out of Rangers this summer. If not, they'll be in Celtic shadow for many years to come. Uh, and second is nowhere. Uh, it's as simple as that because quite simply, Rangers and Celtic demand success. If you don't get it, then sometimes the manager has to pay for it uh, with his head he's out the door sacked uh, so quite simply next season and I've said this continually on this show I think Michael Beals deserves credit for getting something out of a squad that I thought was turgid predictable under Giovanni Van Bronckhurst the performance at St Mirren really summed it all up for me and he's come in he's changed the way they play he's uh, you know made them m more on the front foot and he's trying to get the best out of some players who um, maybe are at the tail end of their career and also Tam I think some players that just will not be there in the summer so I think he's done well I think he deserves tremendous credit for that the only thing that I think is going to be the consistent point that I've made is he's against a club that's got 50 million in the bank who've got a great squad and who look as if they're going to get even stronger in the summer I think he's got the toughest job to try and get anything out of the silverware that's on offer yeah he has and listen it swings and roundabouts you know i can remember when rangers were so far ahead of celtic you know financially and and it was vice versa it goes it goes in cycles celtic now on top you know but i don't think the rangers supporters want to hear you know that kind of defeatist you know, i thought it was a little bit defeatist you know we're, we're miles behind them financially and yeah and they're shopping in the same market and different things i, I think you've got to you know, you've got to just go and try and get the best players you can. You've got to coach the players that are there. Uh, I think Rangers have got a lot of quality still in their team. It's up to him. His job's to get the best out of them, Peter. And, and you can't complain about the financial muscle that their team's got because if supporters are not interested, they just want to see you competing on the pitch. Um, so, listen, he's got, he's got a long road ahead. But I, I said in the show last week, I think Rangers will get rid of 9 or 10, maybe 12, because he's got to reshape that team. He's got. I think he's got to go younger. I think he's got a lot of guys that are maybe past their best and uh, he's got a perfect opportunity in the summer with seven or eight of them out of, co out of contract to yeah. get a clean slate and bring in his own his own players yeah i'm just looking here actually and it's uh, maybe something that i think not too many people disagree but michael harrison says i'm fairly sure the only two clubs that ran a profit this year are celtic and hearts i don't think he's too far away i think it, they are the only two clubs because if you look at it well, hearts have got the I've got more people putting money in. Well, the absolutely. I think, but which but that's like, the yeah. nature of the Premier yeah. League as well, Tom. Yeah. You know, if you're looking at financial fair play, which I think is a complete and utter nonsense across a lot of clubs in Europe and, of course, in the UK, it, it, it's, it's a farce. The whole thing is a farce. And UEFA are toothless when it comes to actually checking it all. But here, where every penny is a prisoner, you're looking at clubs that have lost. Hibs have just released their financial figures a loss this season. Inverness are wondering where they're going to get money to survive, you know, um, in the championship as well. They're, they're going to need some investment as well. So I think uh, quite a lot of uh, supporters are looking and saying, Hearts, good position to be in. Celtic, good position. Lots of supporters just look and think, 
where is that millionaire fan that we want mm. that's going and I don't know about you Tam if I won 161 million uh, on the lottery if I'd won last night's Euro millions Tam I would not be buying a football club it's just it's just a it's a bottomless pit I mean yeah. you just you know, you're, you're, you're not going to get in and out it really you know it's just you're just you're just supporting your club and you're putting money in without you know much hope of getting it back to be honest so no some people just want to put money in and be part of the club and be part of the fabric of the club which is great um, but if you're looking to make money then the football club is not that that thing you go and put your money into yeah absolutely um i'd probably i'd probably phone you and say look come out come out to Barbados and join me uh, Ruffy's here let's have a laugh I'd do that Tam I mean I, I, I'd expect you to come out and I'd, I'd pay your fare there and back but I wouldn't be and then I'd throw a couple of columns and throw grenades at everybody <laughs> from Barbados because I know I'll never see them again is that fair Tom? <laughs> would you give it a lot for 161 million <laughs> off. yeah ah, you wouldn't see me again I'd be sorry no. Peter I'll see you later yeah absolutely and I'd expect that from you by the way I wouldn't even I don't even expect anything from you I'd just expect a, a wee by the way, it's been great seeing you, and uh, here goes uh, me and my wife. Um, well, I'm maybe pushing it. There goes Tom. <laughs> there goes Tom in the private jet. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, it's a Saturday afternoon. Uh, we're delighted you could join us. Uh, listen, football's an entertainment. We hope that you'll enjoy the banter and get involved in it as well. Wolves won Tottenham nil. Tottenham have had a terrible week, haven't they? I mean, knocked out of the FA Cup and now Wolves mm -hmm. a goal up on them. That's a poor, poor week. And I'll tell you, uh, you know, everybody will be hoping Antonio Conte is going to get back quickly from his illness. Yeah, um, obviously he's he's, he's out, the, out, the, out the picture at the minute. Tom, Elgin nil, Bonnie Rig won. I cannot oh, no. believe it. 300 quid slips from his oh, grasp. No. I mean, we're now, one. by the way, it's the worst time to score. I don't know what in about six months. Eh? Oh, no. <laughs> no. Oh, oh. By the way, uh, Kevin Van Veen has made it 2 nothing to Motherwell. We have got no points from that time. No, I don't, I don't think you. many would have had Motherwell in that game. Uh, nope. I think I went for a draw. I think you did too, so... But we went for Hibs, we went for Hearts and Rangers, so yeah. we'll, get, we'll get points out of that. Yeah, absolutely, and I feel so sorry for that guy. £300 slips away, and it's at that point, Tom, I think you actually sit and realise to yourself, because uh, human nature, you automatically think £300, quid, and that's a down payment on a second-hand car, or that's uh, and a right good night out with the wife, and then all of a sudden you think to yourself... I'm staying in tonight. I'm going to watch some <laughs> rotten telly. <laughs> Is that fair? You just go and straighten the coppers together and try and get a Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so Hibs, I've got the three points. I think from that game, I think at Dingwall, uh, Kevin Van Veen adding the second Rangers will have three points uh, with a three-one advantage going into the last couple of minutes against Kilmarnock, and Hibernian will be feeling well happy today. Three-one up on Livingston. I think Livingston down to ten, possibly nine players. I'm hearing. I'll need to check that one. Um, but there's certainly uh, a lot of people just looking, and I might get the information on that one. But if they're down to ten men at the moment. There's no way um, they're going to come back from that. I think they're looking good for all three points there. And as far as hearts are concerned as well, it's one of those days when I think if they can hold on um, to the next couple of minutes, 3 nothing is a comfortable win over St Johnson. Yeah, a good result for, for hearts. I think they uh, obviously had a little sticky patch since coming back from the break, but you know, they've got to keep winning because Hibs are flying at the minute. You know, Hibs are, you know, going really well, a wee bit of momentum. You know, they're staying on their tail, still five points behind. And it looks as if the way the results are going, it's going to be between Hearts and Hibs for that third place. Hearts obviously still huge favourites. But Hibs are just they're just keeping in there and they're keeping on their coattails. Yeah, six yellow cards and one red card in that match against uh, Livingston. So it's clearly a bit, bit, it's a bit feisty, bit isn't it? Naughty. Yeah. And uh, they, as I said, there was, a, there was the same at Easter Road. When Hibs beat them four nothing, I think somebody gets sent off early for Livingston. Still, there was a lot of bookings in that game as well. Still time for Ross County to come back into it. There are nine minutes of injury time. Nine minutes. There must have been a few things going on there that the referees picked up on. Uh, so uh, we will keep you up to date with all the goals that are going in across all four divisions in Scotland. Looking at the English Premier League, where Man City defeated Newcastle earlier today by two goals to nil. And we'll hear from Eric Ten Hag and Jurgen Klopp later in the show because Liverpool are taking on on Manchester United as well and uh, I'm not the only one who talks about decency on this show because uh, I think Eric Ten Hag and Jurgen Klopp have mentioned that the, the fans some of the fans who go to these games so we don't only have the problem here in Scotland 
uh, just chanting about tragedies um, that are really it's sick people who want to actually glorify and chant, uh, you know, singing about people who sadly lost their lives, whether it be the Munich Air disaster, High Soul, Hillsborough, you name it. Anyone who chants any kind of uh, song um, to try and upset the other uh, set of supporters, I think, are sick. And you should ban them for, for life. They should never be allowed into a football ground. Uh, and I think Eric Ten Hag and Jurgen Klopp have uh, come out. They want to really try and make a plea to so many people uh, to try and stop anyone who sings these grotesque songs. And I think that's right. The two managers should come together. Yeah, I think you should listen. There's, it's just it's just completely odd. Imagine going to a game and singing about people that died just because it's a an opposition team that you don't like or you hate. Yeah, you know it's completely out of order, and uh, you know no no decent person would ever do that and take part in these songs. It's not just there; it's it's unfortunately it's, it's, it's evident in Scotland as well. You know, so like, absolutely no time for it. Whether that's going to help or not, probably not. You know, these, these morons are still going to go, you know, f full of drunk and uh, drinking whatever and, and sing their songs. So. But I think Alec Ferguson tried to, you know, say this nine, ten years ago. I was reading, and uh, it's still the same. So, nah, it's just it's, it's sad to hear it when you're sitting watching a game of football. Yeah, well done to uh, Billy and uh, Joseph, who mentioned sad people who do that yep. and different breed of humans who do that. Yeah, you're right, Joseph. I can't disagree with you on that. And I think the majority of people. I'm so lucky um, that you know all our team on here. We absolutely love engaging with fans who are decent people. Um, the majority of them. Every now and then, there's somebody who sneaks through the net, but we try and. Uh, just tell them uh, to go elsewhere. Um, there are many, many forums where uh, there are people who delve into the gutter, but not here. We like a bit of banter, a little bit of uh, fun, and we also like to console people as well because we're going to be consoling the guy who put, he was waiting on 300 quid for Elgin to win, but they've just lost 1 0. Uh, the game's over, and, the, the, and, and as so many people have said, <laughs> gambling, it's a mugs game. Yeah, Billy yeah. King says that. Well done. Yeah. I, just uh, go for Falkirk 5 now. I said Falkirk McGuffey scored a hat trick in that game yeah they're flying and, David uh, Robertson's the manager at Peter yeah, is, what a yes, job he's got now he is, uh, I mean I don't know if you've seen the documentary oh, he loves uh, a sweary word doesn't he in India it was, yeah. it was great wasn't it um, nah he's got a big job there but Falkirk and Dunfermline they are just miles ahead now and uh, they're thought to play each other twice I think the points gap remains 5 and Falkirk played Dunfermline on Tuesday night so I think it's at Falkirk. Yeah. So that could be that's a massive game. If Falkirk win that's game on. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, give us your thoughts on the full times. Uh, I think we will be able to um, hear from Jim Goodwin uh, and Ryan Edwards ahead of Dun United's match against Aberdeen shortly. We'll get the full time uh, basically from the Scottish Premiership. We've got reporters at every game. Uh, we'll get the full time reports and we'll hear from the managers and players. Um, I think David, Graham Potter's heaving a huge sigh of relief as Chelsea win 1 0 against Leeds. Um, so I think that kind of a just eases the hassles of it all because there is a man who's had to endure threats to his family, death threats to his family and of course the pressure has been incredible this week from people saying he should be getting sacked. Yeah, listen, I, I, people think that these guys are obviously they're earning you know, life changing sums of money in terms of their salary but they're still human beings like everybody else, you know, they still get family and feelings and you know, if, if you're opening an Instagram or opening a paper and people are, are threatening your, your kids or your, your family, and you know, I think people, you know, in football can take criticism. You know, football players or managers can take criticism. You know, you take that as part and parcel part of the game, but if it's personal stuff, you know, and uh, and it's lurching into that, that dark side of death threats, you know, just because you're, you're not getting results for the football team, then I think it's completely out of order. And I think he comes across really well. Graham Potter, I think he's worked his way up from the very, very bottom. I think he started at Bath City, you know, in the, the seventh division of, of English football. Worked his way up, went over to Sweden, I think it was Aust Ostersunds, and uh, done well there, gets to Brighton, and he's, he's at the pinnacle now at Chelsea, so you've got to give him a wee bit of time, you know, to try and get his ideas across to that players. They've spent a lot of money, they've got players from all over the planet, you know, playing with them, so 
he needs time to gel that team together, and that's that's a big result from the day. It just takes a wee bit of pressure off him. Full time in the Scottish Premiership, it's Rangers three, Kilmarnock one at Tynecastle, it's Hearts three, St Johnston nil. So two good wins for two teams who will maintain their position in second and third. Although Rangers have reduced the gap on Celtic to six points. Yeah, Rangers have done what they had to do. They had to go and get three points just to keep that little bit of pressure on at Celtic. Um, you know, I don't think anybody, bar the most ardent Rangers fan, would. <coughs> <coughs> Rangers are going to win the league this season, but all Rangers can keep doing is, uh, is, winning, is winning games and hope Celtic slip up somewhere along the line. They'll be hoping tomorrow, that's at St Mern, where uh, Celtic have already slipped up this season, so I don't see that happening. But you know, part, you know, the main thing for Rangers is bouncing back for that cup final and getting a com comfortable win at home. Yeah, uh, Livingston down to 10 men and it's close to finishing. Livingston 1, Hibs 3. Elsewhere, Ross County nil, Motherwell 2. It's a good win for Stuart Kettlewell up there at Dingwall, his old stomping ground. Dundee United against Aberdeen. I think we'll hear from Claire Kinnaird uh, in the next hour just previewing that game for us. Uh, we had a wee chat with her earlier there about, of course, uh, to Jim Goodwin, now Dundee United manager, trying to get one over in his old Side Aberdeen. Um, it was uh, 22 games, 22 games in charge for Jim Goodwin, and then he got the bullet. Yeah, I think Sean Maloney was running about the same. Was he 20? 19. Was he 19? Yeah. You know, that, that just shows you how, how hard it is to be a manager, and not only in, in, in Scottish football, but anywhere. I think the social media now, everybody wants instant results. You know, you don't get time to, to get your own players in or out. You know, you're, you're, you're judged instantly and if you don't get results, you know, the, the fans are on your case. So, you know, let's hope he gets more than that with Dundee United. Yeah. Uh, let's hope he goes in there and, and makes an impression with him and uh, gets his... Because he looked a very, very promising manager before he went to Aberdeen. You know, Alloa, very good. St Myrne, very good. Uh, Aberdeen, you know, poor to be honest. So he's got to try and rebuild his reputation up there. Yeah, well, I think he thought he was going to get longer than he, he did after 11 months in charge. Uh, I think Jim, it was a man that defeats Peter. Yeah, I think... Arvo, and then it was 5 now in Hearts and 6 now in Hibs. Yeah, and that seven-day period is where Jim Goodwin uh, really believes his career at Aberdeen was uh, won and eventually lost. ...moment in time, but I think it's one horrendously bad week that has cost me my job at Aberdeen. And, um, you know, we had a... A really poor performance at Tynecastle, got heavily defeated there. Uh, the Darville game, of course, was uh, you know a real cop upset and a shock to everybody. And then following that up with the, the heavy defeat at Easter Road, you know, I, I think it was inevitable what the outcome was going to be after that particular game. So that one hard week has cost me my job at Aberdeen, unfortunately. But I've been given the opportunity here at Dundee United to, to make amends, and that's the way I look at it. Uh, yeah, uh, so he's got to try and hit the ground running and if he gets, as I mentioned, to clear those three games, the next three games, to try and do it, then I think it, it, it certainly there are three winnable games there before you get to the likes of the free hits against a Celtic or a Rangers where the expectation is not there. Yeah, I think that these are the games you've got to try and win. You know, home games against teams out with Celtic Rangers, you've got to try and get the three points. Listen, it's a huge game for him tonight. You know, it's to go back up against Aberdeen, a lot of those players he signed, he's got an affiliation with. But uh, listen, at the end of the, the end of the day, Aberdeen emptied them, so he'd be wanting to, to to prove them wrong and prove that he's he's a, he's a top manager. Yeah, absolutely. We'll keep you up to date with all the games, all the goals as they hit the back of the net. If there's a goal anywhere, uh, then I think we, there has we'll been a goal. Yeah, was, that's exactly <laughs> what I was just about to say to you. What did I say to you, Tom? Tom, <laughs> yeah, what, what did I say to you? In the last second, <laughs> in the last second, Arsenal uh, oh, win it 3 2. Oh, I mean, that's incredible. The, the place must be going berserk. That is, I mean, they are showing some serious character this season. They were Two nothing down, I think. Uh, Aston Villa as well, and come back and win. So it, it's looking as if it's their year. I yeah. Mean, I mean, I, I think they've stopped playing Man City again, but to come back twice in recent weeks from two 0 down just shows you that that's a that's a, a championship caliber team. Oh, that is absolutely crazy when you talk about these things. Uh, you know, games right at the uh, death when somebody gets one. I think it makes it more special. Um, so uh, a lot of people. 
um, want to talk and give us their uh, thoughts on goals that go in in the last minute and also on some of the stuff that we've been talking about today. We'd love to try and engage with as many as possible. Um, of course, that was Jim Goodwin talking about it. As Jim Goodwin takes the job at Dundee United, somebody had to get the sack. It was Liam Fox, Ryan Edwards, uh, one of the Dundee United players, uh, like so many of that side up at Tannadice, have to take responsibility for letting the previous manager down. Yeah, well, I think regarding Foxy, it's the players who've let him down. We all were trying to buy into what he was doing. And and this is football, it doesn't work out. You've seen it um, um, numerous other clubs in the division. I think we were the one, one of the last to do it. Um, but yeah, Fo Foxy knows. I think I've spoke to him and, and told him we take responsibility for what happened. And um, and it's happened now. So, and, uh, um, another door opens and it's, you know, the, the new manager comes in, he'll have his own ideas and very clear, I can say that from, um, from this morning and, and it's just about getting points on the board, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, Dundee United will desperately be trying to get points on the board. If you have just joined us every Saturday, 4 o'clock till 6, uh, Tam and myself just having a, a chat with each other uh, about the football, bringing you the full-time scores as well. And I can tell you, Hearts have defeated St Johnson by three goals to nil, Rangers 3-1 against Kilmarnock, and it's Ross County nil, Motherwell 2 full-time. Good win for them there. Tam um, Cowan, um, Yeah, well, happy living. I think you finished Hibs 4-1. Yeah, I was just about to say to you right now, Livingston uh, in their match against Hibernian. It's a good win up there um, for L Hibernian against Livingston. It's always a difficult park at the best of times, which is why they've got such a good home record. And there's, they've had really good results against Hibernian, but not today, Tam. No, not not this not this season. That, that's that's four nothing and, and four one the last two games. Livingston against Hibs, so. You know, they're just, they're, they're just starting to have a bit of form at the minute, Hibs, it's great, you know, they're, they're getting momentum, um, obviously McGeady missing is a big a big blow for them, but Eli Johan stepped up to the breach and he's scoring goals, so they stay five points behind Hearts, and uh, listen, Celtic, we'll get Celtic Rangers in the next two games, Hibs. Yeah. Any points I think they can take out of that would be a bonus. Uh, after a VAR check, Hibs have got that fourth yeah. goal, but David Martindale has been sent off. So, um, just as Dick Campbell did last night, I'm almost certain David would have been sent off for maybe a few expletives here and there. Not happy with the performance today. No, and uh, as I said, that's that's what Inverness in the Cup, 3 nothing. That was the one that no one's seen coming. 3 0 against Rangers and then 4 1 today, you know, so. 10 goals against, you know, 1 4 in the last three games. It's a real, real sticky patch for Limitson. They drop out the top six, I think. Uh, so, you know, they're, they're, it's the first real wee bit of crisis, I think, for David Martindale. Yeah, absolutely. We'll hear from Ange Postecoglou and Stephen Robinson in the next hour, uh, basically talking about St Mirren against Celtic on the Sunday. There's two games to look forward to also down south tomorrow. I don't know what you do with your Sunday, but sometimes if you're lucky enough, you get a wee chance to have a, a Sunday where it's Nottingham Forest Everton um, at two o'clock. Prior to that, St Mirren Celtic. So you go St Mirren Celtic into Nottingham Forest Everton and then Liverpool against Manchester United, if you're lucky enough. Elsewhere in the Championship Today, Air United 1, Inverness Caledonian Thistle 2, Cove Rangers 0, Dundee 2, Partick Thistle 3, Wraith Rovers 0 and Queen's Park 2, Greenock Morton 2. In League 1 uh, in Scotland it was Dunfermline 2, Alloa Athletic 0, um, Falkirk 5, Peterhead 0, Kelty Hearts 1, Edinburgh 2, Montrose 2, Clyde 0 and Queen of the South 3, Airdrionians 2. 5 goal thriller there and Marvin Bartley well happy that they held on for the points in League 2 in Scotland it's Annan Athletic 2, Stenhousemuir 3 uh, East 5 3 4 for 2, uh, this one is a painful result for one punter who had 300 quid riding on it, Elgin City 0, Bonnie Rig Rose 1, uh, Stirling Albion 3 Albion Rovers 2 and Stranraer 0, Dumbarton 2 let's go to Ibrox and get the assessment of the 90 minutes and beyond from our reporter Adam Binney Full time here at Ibrox Stadium, it has finished Rangers 3, Kilmarnock 1. A first half blitz was enough to secure a comfortable victory in the end for the home side to get themselves back to winning ways after disappointment in the cup final. Last again, Rangers took the lead after six minutes, a short corner from Barisic found Cholak, he'll lead it off to Cantwell. Cantwell had two attempts of himself before Cholak having an attempt all saved by the goalkeeper or blocked. Eventually, felt to corner Goldson in the fourth attempt to swept it home to give the host a one goal advantage. In the 25th minute, Rangers then 
made it to a diagonal pass from Cantwell. It was only partially cleared by the Kilmarnock defence. It fell to Cholak, unselfishly rolls the ball back for Fashion Zakala, who should have already had two goals himself before this opportunity, but he made no mistake firing that into the back of the net to send Rangers two in front. On the stroke of our time, they made it three. The obligatory captain, James Tavenier, a penalty found the, found at the back of the net on the 45th minute. It was a, a contentious one to say the least. The ball went in behind. It looked as though it came off the left arm of, of Albie also, maybe when he was when he was running back to, to block the run of Ryan Kemp. But I haven't seen it back, so it's quite unclear. Anyways, Tavenier took the penalty, slotted it into the bottom left corner to make it 3-0 before half-time. Kilmarnock did come out in the second half a little bit stronger than they did in the first. They got a goal back. A uh, corner was sent to the box by substitute Jordan Jones, headed back across by Ash Taylor. Then Joe Wright contested the, the aerial duel with Alan McGregor. His punch was missed and there was Joe Wright to head the ball and trundle it over the, the line. But nothing else happened and it finished here at Ibrox Rangers 3, Kilmarnock 1. Not a bad afternoon for Adam there watching four goals in that match and Michael Beale said have bounced back. Give us your thoughts on that. Give us the reaction to the banner as well. The union bears calling for change at boardroom level. Who would come in? Are there any millionaires out there that look at Rangers <coughs> as a viable proposition to try and invest in? And, of course, uh, with that investment, get some success as well. And how much do you think they need? You can give us your thoughts on that. The full time up at Dingwall, uh, Motherwell have indeed won it by two goals to nil. Kevin Van Veen getting the second and all important uh, three points for Stuart Kettlewell's side. And that, uh, I think, is ten points from the last four games. Yeah, listen, it's, it's it's fantastic for Kettlewell. I think when when he came in, I think the the main focus was trying to get Mother away from the bottom of the league. I think they they were in a real dire straits under Stephen Hamill, you know, and uh, a penny for his thoughts and Brian Kerr, it's the same squad of players. Yeah, but you know, to be fair, Kettlewell and he's, he's getting more out of them. So maybe they weren't responding to Stephen or whatever. But for whatever reason, they weren't getting results. Uh, Kettlewell's went in there and uh, he's he's getting results. Ten points out of twelve, as I said. Is a fantastic return. They go ten points clear of the bottom spot, which uh, which looked long odds odds, odds against uh, maybe two or three weeks ago. So, no, he's doing a great job. The Motherwell fans will be delighted. The ones that travelled up there will come back down the road in uh, in high spirits. Yeah, absolutely. It's a long journey at the best of times, and of course, uh, we always want people to uh, travel safely. And uh, of course, with the average speed cameras there as well. If you're if you're behind a tractor, it tests your patience. <laughs> That's all I'm saying to you. I've been there a few times. Uh, let's find out what happened at Tyne Castle. Patrick Mullen was there for us. Put down here at Tyne Castle Park and it has finished. Hard of in three, St Johnson nil. It's two second half goals that sees Hearts cruise to all three points here today. They got the opener in just the 20th minute. Josh Canelli with his the first of the day. His strike from outside the box into the bottom left hand corner gave Hearts the lead into the break. But 20 minutes into the second half, he got his second. A great run down the left-hand side by Barry Mackay. He gets to the byline and he cuts it back to Josh Ganelli, who gets his second of the day. And Hearts were cruising at this moment. Ten minutes later, they got their third. It was George Giron with the ball on the right-hand side. And he's either gone for a ball across the box or a moment of magic. But somehow it's ended up in the back of the net to give Hearts all three points here today. I'll be speaking to both the managers straight away. But who are full-time here at Tynecastle. It has finished. Harder Midlothian three, St. Johnson nil. I love Patrick on the programme um, because even if it's nil-nil and there's been nothing happening, he makes it sound... Enthusiastic. I love, en I love enthusiastic people. He makes it sound as if it's a game that you wish you'd paid into even if it was rank rotten. But that was a good game for him because he gets three goals. Yeah, it was. Uh, entertaining game, 3-0. Um, good result for Hearts. You know, keeps him you know, out in front in third place. St Johnson, you know, poor result for them. Um, but Hearts keep marching on. I think Hearts needed that. I think over, over the last couple of weeks, particularly after that Motherwell defeat, yeah, they were the dreadful, it's the worst I'd seen them, um, they lost 2 nothing. It was important to bounce back today and to, to keep the, feet, the, the foot down the pedal for third place. So, no, um, comfortable home win and uh, they look to try and uh, build on that next week. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, down south in the English Premier League, it finished Man City 2, Newcastle 0. Arsenal with a late, late winner uh, to defeat Bournemouth 3-2. Aston Villa 1, Crystal Palace 0. 
Brighton 4, West Ham 0. What about that scoreline? That is an absolute tonking for uh, David Moyes' side. Uh, Chelsea 1, Leeds 0. An all-important win for Graham Potter. And Wolves 1, Tottenham 0. A miserable week uh, for Tottenham going out of the cup. And, of course, Wolves winning by that solitary strike today. Southampton and Leicester kicks off at half past five. We'll hear from Ange Postecoglou and Stephen Robinson as St Mirren lock horns with Celtic tomorrow. Seems such a long time ago, but uh, St Mirren were the last side this season uh, to defeat Celtic in the league. And uh, they haven't lost uh, from that game other than the European fixtures. They've just been battering their way through everyone. Yeah, they have. The consistency they've shown under Ange Postecoglou has been incredible. Um, I mean, I think there's only two points after that with the 2-2 draw at Rangers. Yep, and uh, I don't think he'll make, we spoke about it yesterday, I don't think he'll make the same mistakes he done the last time at St Mern, where he rested five or six key players and uh, they went out and undercooked the players that came in and uh, St Mern deservedly turned them over 2-0. So, listen, I, I think that when you look at it, you know, it's important for Celtic to keep, keep the foot to the pedal and keep winning and to keep the doors closed on Rangers. Rangers supporters will be looking for St Martin to do them a turn uh, tomorrow, but I don't, I don't see it. I think Ange will go full strength, and there's so much competition for places at the minute at Celtic, and that just drives everyone to put in good performances to keep their jersey. Yeah, uh, thank you very much uh, to so many of you who offer your opinion and obviously interact with as well. And there's some nice uh, comments coming in. Michael Harrison says, "Go on yourself, Patrick," um, which is actually quite good. I like people who actually. <laughs> Patrick's the man, says Alan Woods. <laughs> You get some who offer uh, their thoughts on this and, of course, some who uh, fast tank says, what's happening to Tam's hair? What's happening with your hair at the moment, Tam? You usually keep it trim and short, but uh, this kind of a wavy Nick Hayward haircut 100 style that you're going for at the moment with that stupid beard, what's happening? No, just... uh... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no, no, I've, I've got several different hairstyles you've lost your way at the moment haven't I, you I just uh, yeah. honestly I just whatever way I wake, I wake up in the morning I think I'm going to sweep it over I'm going to just mess it or I'm just yeah. going to do nothing yeah. uh, I just the funniest uh, the funniest thing I've ever seen I'm, going to get an, I'm thinking about getting an earring should I, should uh, I come in next well, time an earring? to be fair if you do get an earring then uh, you know how lots of people in the west of Scotland buy baseball bats but they've never actually played this sport we, we go uh, if, uh, an uh, if you it? come in with an earring I would lose the plot I when I was a bit not that it's a bad I thing, eh? I had a life crisis when I was yeah. 30, 31. Yeah. I got an, I had a diamond earring. Lots of guys wear earrings. I know, but I, do, I don't think you get away with 30, over 30. Charlie Nicholas is the only one I can think of. Yeah, get Charlie could, plus Charlie's Char- quality. Charlie could wear a bin bag in his head and nobody would question him. Um, the other thing I was going to say to you though, Tam, is uh, that it still doesn't beat the day that you walked into the studios looking like a Bond villain I'm with that blonde hair. I'm going to tell you the story behind that. It's on, you'll see the picture somewhere. Yeah. So I went over to my friend Shirley's over in the, the West End to get my hair. I was going to get coloured. Yeah. So just let streaks and uh, so she put it on and, it, and she took the thing off and it was, it was, bright yellow wow it was like nicotine somebody just been blown fags on it for about three years <laughs> <laughs> so I went listen I can't you need to <coughs> so put another dye in it <laughs> it turned silver purple <laughs> and she was going to put another dye in it and my, my, at this point my scalp was about burnt off I said just leave it and uh, she cut it and it was, that was a, that was a, and the next day I had the, the photo for PLZ yeah. and I never slept that night I was thinking I'm going to get absolutely ripped tomorrow yeah you did uh, and, and of all the time to get your hair like that for a photograph unbelievable but um, I don't think you'll surpass that day Tam to be perfectly honest with you uh, what happened between Livingston and Hibbs it got a bit feisty here's Ali Graham final score here at Allen Vale it's Livingston 1 Hibernian 4 Joel Lublay gave Livy a ninth minute lead when he fired past David Marshall from close range. Hibbs equalised through early Johan before Johan helped himself to another when he slid the ball low into the net just before the break. Livy got off to a bad start the second half when Jack Fitzwater was red carded for a trip on Matthew Hope. Chris Cadden then ran the whole length of the park after the Hibbs corner but his cross was deflected home by Omi Ogo for a third. In injury time, Mikolo Kukuevic added a fourth to give Hibbs a resounding victory. It keeps Hibbs fourth, and for Livy, it's four defeats on the bounce. Final score here from Allen Vale, it's Livingston 1, Hibernian 4. Yeah, what a game for Ali to go to and enjoy. Aye, uh, brilliant. Uh, it's great. It, it, it was good there. Um, I was just thinking, I, think, I was thinking there was five goals, you know, a red card. 
Uh, but no, that, that was great. I mean, I'm listening. It's a, it's a fantastic result. Fantastic result for Hibs. You know, to go there and win four one. You know, and as Ali said, there you know four defeats in a row for Livingston. You know, it's it's a bad run there on a poor run of form they're on. And Hibs, I think that's seven unbeaten. You know, I think five wins and two draws. So, you know, they're really they're starting to get players back. Kukarevich was back. Nisbet's back. You know, and they're starting to just get a wee bit of momentum and they go into this double header against Celtic Rangers in, in flying form. Uh, as I said, Matthew Hopper in there as well. So all of a sudden, there's competition for places up there. He's a he's a good player, Kukarevich. He was he looked yeah. very very good before he got injured. Um, You've got Matthew Hoppy there who scored a hat trick in the Bundesliga, who played well today as well. So all of a sudden, uh, you know, Will Fish, Paul Hanlon at the back, excellent. They're starting to have a bit of momentum behind Hibs now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I can't tell you that I'm just looking at uh, uh, some of the feed in here and Paddy Lavery says, Patrick's the best name in the world to have. So slightly <laughs> slightly biased there. And uh, some Michael says, poor Tam, you're going to give him a complex, Peter. No, what we do is, is we, uh, we actually got a thick skin. We need dressing room humour, don't we, Tam? We that's do. I, that's what I miss most of it. You know, people always say to me, do you miss playing? Do you miss playing? I was, I was a pro for 17 years. Yeah. You know, and uh, people say, do you miss playing? Do you miss the, the, the thing I miss most is the dressing room. Yes. I miss getting in at nine o'clock in the morning and slotting somebody's gear. Or, yeah, or the some, buzz. The buzz going out and training and somebody misses a chance playing pranks on each other and winning games, losing, even losing yeah. games, you know, the feeling. Yeah, just everything about everything about it. Uh, it's almost as if you missed the school playground, isn't it? I did. <laughs> I, I, was, I was always at the heart of it, wherever I was, yeah. you know, and uh, whatever club I was at. But that's the most important thing. And if you've not got a thick skin in the dressing room, you are, you are lost, just, yeah. Just, Especially when you get guys like Ruffy in the dressing room. Um, also, Fast Tank says, Peter, we want you back as a commentator. You were superb. Um, I'm sure that's. Just reading all the good ones about well, you. Just, well, listen, about me. to be honest with you, by the way, I get leathered early on in the programme, so I thought I'd read one out. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, uh, to be fair, for us, I loved commentating on football, um, but unfortunately. Commentating a few of my games as well. Yeah, yeah, I'm absolutely. Still get the, still get the yeah, the unfortunate the thing about it, Tam, is we, we have a monopoly in the country now, which is, I think, is a. Sad situation on radio. Mm. That's just one of those things. It's just uh, an opinion. I think competition. We should is highlight the commentary Helicopter Sunday. Uh, helicopter Sunday is one that uh, I think a lot of people look back on and say, "Yeah, it sticks the in their mind." Changing the helicopter's changing direction will live with me. For, uh, one of my mates phoned me up and he said he was going to batter me because <laughs> he, like he didn't because <laughs> he didn't like the commentary. <laughs> uh, and I always remember um, James McFadden's in Paris. Ah, that's right. Uh, Henrik Larsson's against the Bo Vista yeah. sticks in my mind. And the other one that sticks in my mind, uh, uh, I did watch James McFadden beat six players against Livingston at Fir Park. That's and that trick, didn't he? It was unbelievable. Uh, yeah. And the last one that uh, sticks in my mind is John Hartson against Liverpool. Um, yeah. One two with Lennon, and then boom, roof of the net. Uh, I'll tell you what, was, you remember uh, Maravchik's goal against Hibs? Yes, that was a good one exactly, as well. I've still got that video because Alec McLeish slaughtered me. We were 4 nothing down, I think, at half time at Celtic. <laughs> and I was playing. I didn't touch the ball. Celtic were brilliant. And it went at half time. And all, all the mistakes at the back, you know, all the goals I lost. Who's the, who's the turning and slaughter? Me. Because they told me when yeah. I, I was to drop in onto their midfield when they moved the ball. And I was maybe 10 yards away from Maravchik. And I'm thinking to him, I'd actually just start the track and I'm just thinking to him, just shoot for there, he's not going to score for there. Yeah. And he absolutely ripped it with his left foot right in the top corner and McLeish was going, what did I tell you before the game? Drop in on Maravchik. And I was thinking, we've just lost four goals. Why are you having a go at me? Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, anybody... I was right behind it, it was an arrow, bang. Absolutely, I mean, I remember doing the commentary for that one and it was just mental. Uh, Ronnie says, helicopter Sunday was brilliant, Peter. Uh, we had a right laugh that day. I, I mean, the whole thing went from one end to the other, non-stop. And would you believe it i remember the, the reason why i remember that one with great fondness is because after i went up to barry ferguson's house um about a week later uh, to play pool with him and bob malcolm and uh, <laughs> well, bob bob was a friend of the family well, well, well. it was <laughs> I actually I went up to play pool with him because Bob was a friend of family and as you know I had a great friendship and still have a great friendship with Barry I just haven't spoken to him since he kissed the jersey um, but uh, and then and then bolted was that his man cave? it was up at his man cave and we went up there and I'd, I'd got a t-shirt I know I got a t-shirt for him and uh, Bob and it just says the helicopter's changing direction and a big helicopter on is it for it? him and the two of them were howling with laughter in it uh, thank you very much to everybody who's talking about Faddy the reason why 
Faddy was so special because we got battered for 89 minutes mm. and the one thing that sticks in my head about that commentary Tom do you remember those days when you played five aside as a kid and if you scored a brilliant goal you used to say pick that out Aye. to the guy, the goalkeeper and because Raymond Dominic and the French team were so desperately trying to get were you know that, they were so really aware well. and they were saying they were going to hammer Scotland and as soon as that ball hit the net I went pick it out Landrew <laughs> and it sticks in my head for that it was almost like a schoolboy no? Uh, no 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 I've managed to keep it together yeah. actually to be fair by the way Joey you tell you something <laughs> See if you want to be a commentator, a really good commentator, get people excited. Ah, you've got it. That's what you've got to do. I mean, I mean, John Watson has got some iconic commentaries. It's brilliant. Barry Davis as well, I remember. Ah, I like Brian Moore too and a, and a guy called Gerald Sinstat. Um, I remember them. They were all good commentators because you want to get the excitement of the game. People want to remember the great goal, but if they remember the, the commentary and it evokes a memory, um, you know, and, a, and an emotion, that's what it's all about. Whether it's radio or TV, you want to be able to convey something that gets people excited. Martin Tyler's Aguero, the last minute against Queen's Park Rangers, phenomenal, you know. Um, so thank you to so many people talking about commentary on this. Um, here's the table at the end of an unbelievable day in the uh, Scottish uh, Premiership because as you look at it, Rangers have reduced the gap at the top uh, to three points, Hearts, uh, six points, sorry, Hearts and Hibs uh, got victories today. At the bottom end, uh, Tam, uh, I think we expected Kilmarnock uh, to be sitting there on 24, but what do you make of elsewhere? Ross County on 24, Motherwell with that crucial win. Yeah, that just, you can see that little gap developing now, you know, 20, 24, 24, and now Mother won 30, you know, and St. Johnston I think will be fine as well, so I, I think you're, you're maybe looking at three now, uh, Kilmarnock, Dundee United and Ross County, I still think Ross County will get out of it because they've got goals in their team with Jordan White and, uh, and Brophy, obviously didn't happen today, but yeah, Jim Goodwin's got a big job on Peter, he really has, uh, he's got to try and get that four point gap, you know, is, is, is quite a big gap at this point, but it can all change tonight. If they go and beat Aberdeen, they go a point behind, you know, command it with a game in hand, <coughs> then it's all, it's all to play for. So, listen, some big, big games coming up. And I've always said that when it goes down to that split, when you've got the five teams you're playing against them all in that bottom six split, <coughs> it's six pointers every week. It's six pointers every week, particularly if you're doing the bottom. And, uh, you know, you cannot afford to lose games. So, no, it's... It's looking a bit desperate for Dundee United, but that can all change with one game tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Um, OK, uh, let's look ahead to that game. Dundee United uh, taking on Aberdeen. Um, and, of course, we had an, uh, a, a wee chat with Claire earlier on um, to get her thoughts on Jim Goodwin going to be there. He's going to get pelters, isn't he? Oh, he's going to get slaughtered, I, but <laughs> I, I think he's just it. He's that kind of player, isn't he, Peter? And he was always that kind of player that opposition fans love to hate and even... Opposition fans love to hate him as a manager as well, so listen, I think he'll be desperate. I know he's, he's playing it down as if <laughs> it's only another game, but surely... Sometimes that, you can come out of a tunnel though, Tam, and you can just go into the dugout and you know you're getting a wee pelters. Tanadice oh, is the long walk. It's, it's, and it's, uh, that's a whole, that whole stand it's all Aberdeen, Aberdeen fans, yeah. so listen, I think he'll be, he'll be desperate to get one over them. Yeah, absolutely. Let's find out uh, about the game. It's kicking off at six o'clock. Our reporter, uh, Craig Kinnaird, is there. It's set to be an interesting evening here at Tannadice as Dundee United host Aberdeen. Jim Goodwin already looking to make an impact following being confirmed as the new Dundee United manager on Wednesday. His first game ironically sees him in charge of Dundee United playing his former side Aberdeen from where he was sacked only 33 days ago following a shock exit in the cup to Darville and then a thumping 6-0 by Hibbs. Speaking to him earlier this week he says he's expecting a hot reception from both sides. Aberdeen come to Tannadice in pursuit of three points to help with their top six campaign whereas Dundee United are looking to pull back points at the bottom of the table. I'll keep you up to date with halftime and full-time reports here at Tannadice and don't forget to subscribe to PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel for all the latest football news. Yeah, I couldn't put it better. You can get a subscription at the end oh, there. Yeah, I love that, by the way. It can't be a bit of promotion uh, as well. Superb. And she had that great line in there. Of course, uh, Jim Goodwin, hostility from both sides, which always remembers me of Darren Jackson. He said, I was the only guy that ever got booed coming on for the home team and the away team. <laughs> 
<laughs> when you've got that special quality. Uh, so thanks to Claire. She'll give us uh, all the updates across our social media channels as well. And if you download the PLZ Soccer app, uh, you can quite simply watch the programme live uh, on your phone as well. And as I do that, I just go there, Tam, and you, you click on it and you can watch the actual programme uh, live at any point. And you can also, uh, throughout the afternoon, uh, you'll get all the breaking news as well on the PLZ Soccer app. So thank you very much to uh, Claire Kinnaird uh, for that report there from Tanadice. Uh, elsewhere, we'll be getting reaction from the managers. Michael Beale will be offering us his thoughts on a good win over Kilmarnock. Uh, Robbie Nielsen will be delighted with uh, a clean sheet against St Johnston. Uh, David Martindale, I think, will have a few choice words to say to us after his side lost 4-1 to Hibs. But I think it was a fitting tribute that uh, Hibs uh, won that match so emphatically. Lee Johnson, I think, conducted himself really well in midweek, paying tribute to not only Ron Gordon, but uh, uh, Ron Gordon's uh, family as well and how he was determined to try and uh, make sure that this uh, Hibs side performed in his honour and that was a fitting tribute today I think they actually wore black strips um, with uh, some uh, writing on it with regards to uh, Ron Gordon the chairman sadly who passed away Yep, listen, I, I, I don't think it could have went any better for Hibs you know, getting that kind of result today uh, to honour uh, the chairman 4-1, uh, great result um, and I'm sure Ron's family will be looking on at that result in the in the minute silence today. So, no, listen, I, I think uh, you know Hibs are in a good run of form at the minute. They really are. Um, seven games, I think, unbeaten. So they take momentum into, into two huge games against Celtic Rangers. But you know to go to Livingston and, and put four past them, you know, and as a as a great result on that pitch, you always know it's a it's a tough game. I think there was three and a half thousand Hibs fans there as well today, and that always drives you on. And uh, they went and got a, a, a great result. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Gorter, McCrory, McKenzie, Shinny, Miofsky, Duke, Ramadani, Pollock, Clarkson, Duncan, and McDonald. Uh, that's the starting lineup uh, for Aberdeen. Barry Robson still caretaker, and as Alan Burrows mentioned, he's looking to appoint a, a Don's manager sooner rather than later. Although whether it's from the usual suspects, I have my doubts. I think they might surprise us with someone out of left field. Yeah, they might. Um, you know, the, you know, Alan Burrows wasn't obviously giving too much away in terms of who, who the next manager was going to be. You know, I think if uh, if Barry Robson keeps getting results, if he goes and wins again tonight, you know, he's really pressing his claims to get that job full time. I don't think that's going to happen. I think Aberdeen to be an Aberdeen manager, you need experience. You know, you need you know Barry maybe needs to go somewhere else and and get some experience before maybe coming back to a club like Aberdeen. So, you know, Neil Lennon's been mentioned. Other different people have been mentioned, but. I think all will become clear at the end of the season. I don't think there's any immediate rush now, Peter. I think Aberdeen are in a comfortable position. They're not going to get relegated. I don't think they're going to finish third. Uh, I think they're, they're probably going to finish maybe fifth or sixth. So I think it's important that Aberdeen take their time and uh, they've, got, they've got a steady pair of hands there at the minute anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Birrigiti in goal, McMahon, Mulgrew, Fletcher, Edwards, Sibold, Beach, McGrath, Levitt, Freeman and Hearts. That's the starting lineup for Dundee United. The first uh, 11 chosen by Jim Goodwin in his first game in charge for United against the team that sacked him, as Claire mentioned, 33 days ago, Aberdeen. Um, and boy, I'm sure he would love just to surprise everyone with a United win uh, when they really haven't been able to buy a win. Six consecutive defeats. And the last one, I think, just put the tin lid on it for Liam Fox. I can tell you that uh, St Mirren against Celtic is tomorrow. That's the last of the, the games in the Scottish Premiership. Of course, uh, congratulations to Riho Tati. No surprise, he's won uh, Player of the Month. No, I think he's been a he's been a brilliant signing for Celtic. I think that when you see his performances, he came in, hit the ground running straight away. You know, a couple of goals against Rangers at Parkhead. You know, and uh, he's been absolutely exceptional. Um, he's got everything in the locker. You know, he can get about the pitch. He can put his foot in. You know, he can score goals. He's range of passing. You know, he's he always looks to pass forward. I I always like that in a midfield player. When you see some midfield players let you go side to side and keep it safe and just keep possession and and keep their stats ticking over uh, in terms of ball retention. But his first thoughts always looking forward, try to thread balls through into dangerous areas. Um, he's settled in very very quickly. Him and Maida and Kyogo. So. I think he's very happy at Celtic. You know, he's got the he's got his, his other Japanese uh, players there to, to keep him company. So, no, I think it's well deserved. Uh, his two goals against Aberdeen, and listen, I think Celtic need to try and get him tied down even longer. I think there'll be 
there'll be envious glances coming up from, from England uh, if he keeps this level of performance up. Yeah, uh, I think the uh, only team to defeat uh, Celtic back in September was indeed St Mirren in Paisley. Hart, Ralph, Jens, Welsh and Taylor, Turnbull, McGregor, Moy, Abada, Kyogo and Maida. And the, and the only area where you would say it was a drastic change was the back line, which just wasn't good enough and, and St Mirren were able to capitalise. And, and if you look at the two goals that day, you know, they were kind of scrappier goals. I think one of them was a header in the six-yard box. Jens and Welsh not commanding enough. They yep. missed Carter Vickers and Starfelt badly. Uh, and they've still got Kobe Yashi to come and in. And Moy came in uh, from Siberia that game. He hadn't been playing at all. Yep. And uh, I, I can remember him getting slaughtered after that. A lot of Celtic fans think he's not good enough. You know, he's why is he playing? He's not good enough. He made too many changes. And uh, and Aaron Moy's now you know a standout in that team. So he just made too many changes. Peter he had too many players in that team that were undercooked. They hadn't been playing and weren't match fit, match ready. And St Mirren punished him, but I don't see that being the case tomorrow. I think he'll play strongest team. Yeah, uh, and as far as uh, St Mirren and what they can offer, Ange Postacoglu this time around knows exactly uh, what's coming his way. Yeah, look, um, yeah, I think they've had a really strong season. Um, you can see that, um, you know, with where they are, uh, you know, their position on the table, and um, they've got really strong home form, which I think, you know, has, uh, has given them you know, the edge over other sides and, um, you yeah, know, they're pretty consistent in the way they play and the way they set up and because of that I think, you know, the players are really comfortable with, with um, the system they play and, yeah, like every other game for us, it, it's, it still comes down to the way we deal with, um, you know, the challenge before us and, uh, you know, come uh, Sunday we'll be ready for that. Yeah, Celtic just look as if they're in that mode now where they're going through the gears and whether anybody can stop them or not is another matter. That, Of course, we mentioned that it was a 2-2 at Ibrox. The League Cup win last week certainly has filled them full of confidence again. If St Mirren are going to produce something, it's going to have to be uh, special. They're going to have to be all at it. And uh, as Stephen Robinson mentioned ahead of this match tomorrow, uh, really, when they get the chance, when they've got that possession, they really have to try and impose themselves on Celtic. Yeah, look, we we know that we're organised defensively, and I repeat it every time we play any of the really good teams in the league, where you, you have to buy passes when you land on the ball. We've done that at Celtic Park. Um, we've done it in the previous home game. We've done it in the in the first game as well, um, when we got beat two 0 I think it was at that stage. You know, so we we have had parts of the game where you get ownership which when you play the top teams you need that you can't defend for 96 minutes otherwise they'll eventually break you down so we will have a go at, at certain stages of the game we, we know what triggers we press on and we've got a lot of belief in, it, in our ability we know that it's you know everybody again outside ourselves expects us to lose but um, as I say we've got a lot of belief in what we do I can't see anything other than an emphatic Celtic win no I, I think the Celtic are too strong at the minute Peter I think that um They've got competition for places, even if he makes one or two changes, which I don't think he will. Um, the guys coming in are just as good, so the confidence from winning that silverware last week as well, they've had a full week to prepare. Um, I think that Celtic will be too strong. I, I think they'll have a wee beaner bonnet that St Mern beat them the last time, and I think they'll get into that uh, wanting to turn them over uh, to prove that was just a one-off. Yeah, uh, Michael Harrison says, who's your player of the year? We're getting to that point, mid-March, April, the the you know the votes come in obviously it's a wee bit earlier than everybody would like but who who's your player of the year is is it a Tati a McGregor a Shankland a Kyogo it's difficult at the minute um, because yeah. I think there's a lot of people in contention I think that uh, Kyogo definitely yeah you know the amount of goals that he's scored uh, Cal McGregor you just expect every season he's he's, he's su such a good player you mentioned yesterday um, that, that Miofsky deserves a mention but I think the general consensus is great he scored mm. goals but he it's not one of those players that really has set the heather on fire. Everybody's not looking going, oh, he's unbelievable skill. He's just been a steady no, Eddie scoring goals in a poor team. He scored 17 goals for Aberdeen. Yeah. You know, if he scores another eight between now and the end of the season, he scores 25 goals for Aberdeen. He's he'll, got, be he's, he's got, he's, he'll be off. He's got it. He's got to be in the, He's got to be in the mix for play of the year. Yeah. I mean, um, I, I always feel, I'm not taking anything away from Kyogo, but I feel if you're playing in that Celtic team every week, You've got to be scoring minimum 20, 25 goals. The amount yeah. of chances they create, you know, you're you're camped in their half for the whole for 90 minutes. You know, you you just need to make your runs across people and you'll get chances to score. So I think it's harder to score 20, 25 for Hearts Aberdeen than it is for Celtic. Um, so I think if if 
Lawrence Shankland or uh, Mayovsky scored 20 plus goals. I think they've got to be in the, in, in the race. Okay, interesting stuff. You can give us your choice as player of the year. Uh, let's go to Tyne Castle and get the thoughts of a very happy Hearts manager after a 3 0 win over St Johnston. Here's Robbie Nielsen. I've, I've said it a million times. You know, at the start of the season, we had that many injuries that were asking our, our creative players to play Sunday, Thursday, Sunday, Thursday, Sunday, Thursday. And, you know, they, they lose that spark. You know, I think you're starting to see the best of Barry now that, you know, we're going, you know, Saturday, Saturday. It, it's amazing that he mentions that it was difficult to play Sunday, Thursday, Sunday, Thursday. Um, really good teams are able to do that. Or is it now we've moved on so much that people need a bigger squad? Yeah, I said that all along, Peter. I don't you, if you remember me saying, I think that you, ju you judge Hearts, you know, after the new year. I think that uh, the start of the season, they were up against some, some quality teams as well. Istanbul, um, Fiorentina. Fiorentina still in the tournament, you know, one of the favourites to win that, actually, the conference division. So yeah. uh, they were up against quality teams, and he's right, there's so many injuries. They were having to play the same 11, 12, 13 players every week, you know, and they, they didn't have any depth to their squad. You know, three games a week was tough on them. But I think you can see now, yeah, if you're if you're playing one game a week, you know, you're fresh. You know, if you're a, an attacking player, a wide player, you know, you're fresh, you're getting the games looking forward to a game, you train hard all week and you get into a game fresh. Whereas if you're playing Sunday, Thursday, Sunday, you know, you can become a bit jaded and lose a wee bit of yard of pace. So no, I think that the that was a good result for Hearts today and they they were always going to come on strong once they get a lot of players back from injury. And yeah. let's not forget, Peter, they've still got a lot of players out. You know, yeah. Craig Gordon, Boyce, Beningame. Um, there, there's three right away, Halkett. Um, so they've got a lot of big players still, still out with injury and uh, still to come back. So I think you'll see a, 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 a much stronger Hearts team next season when they're all back from injury. Yeah, I think another thing I was just checking, um, uh, Tam, and I'm, I'm not sure if you even actually got any minutes, but I still think it's a, a, a nice thing to say is when we were looking, I'm just looking here at the overall um, lineups uh, from the game today uh, with uh, Rangers, and Rangers did have um, John Souter back on the bench. Uh, didn't get on, but just to have him on the bench and the Rangers fans suddenly think, oh, there's another player that will be on the way back that Michael Beale will look to in the summer. Yeah, I think if there's one player, you know, that I, I would want to see getting a, a clear run of injuries is him. I think he's suffered so much from, from bad injuries through his career. I think he's a top quality player. I think when he's fit, he's a real, real quality player. He showed that at Hearts. Um, he showed it with Scotland at times as well. So you want to see him back fit. He's had a tough time as well lo losing his brother uh, to m &D. You know, picking up an injury as soon as they come in at Rangers, he's had a really, really tough time. So I really, fingers crossed, hope that boy gets, you know, a run, an injury-free run, and he can get back in the Rangers team and show how good he is. Yeah, absolutely. And um, we will hear from Michael Beal before the end of the programme, uh, just discussing that 3-1 win over Kilmarnock today, which reduces the gap at the top of the Scottish Premiership to only six points. If you have just joined us, don't forget, um, every Saturday, four o'clock till six, uh, Tam and myself uh, and uh, all our reporters at all the Scottish Premiership games, giving us their assessment of the half-time, full-time report, and managers and players offering their assessment on their team's performance. It's well worth joining us and of course it's a bit relaxed you can interact with us on the YouTube, you can watch it on the app as well. Uh, so really really do enjoy uh, listening to so many of your comments, trying to engage with you if you download the app you'll get all the breaking football stories and as ever we have competitions and quiz questions as well and, and just in case uh, you were wondering what the quiz question was, uh, James Ward-Prowse is closing in on David Beckham's record of scoring free kicks in the English Premier League. I wonder if you know how many free kicks that he has scored. You can give us your thoughts on that. Um, hopefully we'll hear from uh, a happy Motherwell manager, Stuart Kettlewell, uh, after the win. Um, as far as uh, the uh, promise from only 60 seconds ago, I said we were going to hear from Michael Beale uh, in that 3-1 win over Kilmarnock. This is his assessment of their performance today. 
Yeah, listen, it's more like it. We've shown it in flashes. Again, today we've only shown it in flashes, but I thought the first half was as dominant as you can be in a game. And, and uh, they, they came here, Kilmarnock, and were going to try and frustrate us. And, you know, we thought it might be a sticky game. And the, the, we tried something clever off a set play, and it got us the first goal. So I'm delighted with that. It's important that we're strong on set plays. And, and that, was a, that was a nice way to get in front because then it changes the way Kilmarnock are going to approach the rest of the match. And... Uh, yeah, listen, I'm pleased with the boys. They've had a tough week. We all have as a club, and uh, it's nice to get the three points and move forward. It's just one game. We've got another big game coming up now on Wednesday. Yeah, um, hard to get a, a result there. And, of course, um, Rangers players responded, I think, in the first half. When you go three up, uh, you know that the points are going to be in the bag. And uh, maybe uh, that's the perfect answer for some of the fans, although not all of them are happy, uh, I have to say. Missing out on silverware, especially against Celtic. Some of them have put a banner up wanting change at boardroom level. But that, uh, that is something that usually takes a, a considerable amount of time. Yeah, it does. Listen, I think in terms of Celtic Rangers, listen, seconds nowhere. You know, and I think Michael Beale's finding that out now. You know, he got off to a great start as, as Rangers manager. You know, he was getting a bit of praise. The Rangers fans were were confident going into that final. Um, but I think that showed that there's still a still a gap between the two teams. And uh, you know, he started to go on about how Celtic are, are you know so far ahead of them financially. Rangers fans don't want to hear that. They want to hear you know how are we going to get closer to Celtic. And they don't want to hear about financial muscle and, and this and that. So, listen, he knows. He knows now. Uh, you're one game away from a crisis, particularly in an old firm game. You can't afford to lose them, and you can't afford to lose finals uh, when you're Celtic or Rangers manager. So, listen, he's just got to keep winning games, and uh, he's got to try and get into that Scottish Cup final. And he might run into Celtic again. And if he does, then Rangers have got to put in a, a far better performance than they done uh, last Sunday. Yeah, because that's the that's the. That's the situation you find yourself in. You're looking at yourself, yourself. If you're going to have to win this cup, you're going to have to beat a Rangers or a Celtic. Just stop Celtic winning the treble as well. Which yeah, would, which would give Rangers massive momentum going into next season. Um, so that 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 could turn into a if they both get through and, and avoid each other to get into the final. That's a massive game. You know, Celtic win the treble. You know, the Celtic fans are, are buzzing. You know, they think we're going to go and dominate again next season if, if Rangers won it then they maybe think, no, oh, the tide's turning a wee bit, we've stopped him for the treble and they get into the following season with confidence. And Michael Beale has gets his first silverware as a manager. Uh, so it, it, it's a, it could be a massive cup final come the beginning of June. Yeah, it's not been a good day for St Johnson manager Callum Davison, uh, as he explained to our reporter Patrick Mullen. So to me, I think we have to react better than that because it was basically a huge sort of turning point in the game. Uh, I thought it was actually quite an even game. It sounds really stupid, I thought it was an even game. I thought up till they scored the third, you know, uh, you thought we were always in the game and uh, you know these little things, you know, we don't react for me quick enough and then they obviously deflect the goal goes in, it gives them a little bit of control. After that I thought we actually tried to do the right things, I thought we put them under pressure, I thought tactically we pressed them really well, you know, uh, unfortunately uh, you let a runner go uh, and then you're 2 nil down and then basically it's a, a snap hill battle. Yeah, um, it's always going to be tough, especially if you go a goal down at Tynecastle. And remember, that um, park was absolutely bouncing today because it was practically a sellout, which is great. That's Hart St Johnston. Yeah, obviously, I think that Tynecastle's a great place to go and play football. Hearts are going well this season. They're sitting in third. You know, um, supporters are getting behind the team. You know, and it's always, it's basically always a sellout at Tynecastle. You know, if the team's going well, they will come and back the team. Uh, it's a difficult place to go and get a result. I think a lot of people would have fancied Hearts to win that game today as well. So St Johnson have got to dust their cell down and go again. Um, they still probably need a couple of results just to pull themselves even further clear for that bottom two. But in terms of Hearts, you know, it's a good result for them. They march on and they, they go into the midweek games now. Yeah, um, as well as St Mirren against Celtic tomorrow, um, you've got a couple of English Premier League games to look forward to. Nottingham Forest, Everton and Liverpool take on uh, Manchester United at half past four. Um, and I think Jurgen Klopp is well aware they're facing a totally different Manchester United now. Uh, there's certainly a change in form. First of all, it's, like, it's difficult as a... As a I would say pretty much impossible to be happy about something positive at Man United when you are the Liverpool manager. I'm here for seven and a half years, so it's not that I watch them and hope they win or whatever. But to be one of those, I'm really happy for Rashford uh, because it was very difficult last year. Um, where he obviously was not performing on the level he he um, he's able to perform, and I knew 
uh, this will change again. Yeah, what a nice touch Liverpool manager paying tribute to Marcus Rashford. Yeah, I think he's right. I think that Marcus Rashford's done a lot of good. Uh, I think he put maybe affected his game a little bit, Peter. You know, he was doing a lot of stuff off the off the pitch, which was was fantastic, by the way, in, in helping young kids all over Britain. So, um, I think he just had to concentrate and get his tunnel vision back on on football again, and and he's doing that. He's shown under the new manager that he is a top top player. Uh, he, he's totally transformed. I think he'd, he'd a decent World Cup as well with England, and uh, I think his contract's up in the end of next season. I think Man United will be desperate for him to sign a new contract because the form he's in, I think he could go and pick, take his pick Peter anywhere, PSG, Real Madrid, Barcelona, anywhere. I think he can go and play anywhere. Yeah, he's, he's that, that good. good. Yeah, um, Eric Ten Hag has transformed Manchester United. They've won the Carabao Cup, and I think the main reason that they've been transformed is he's managed to get an 11 on that park quite a few leaders and he wants even more as he tries to get United back to the top oh, I think our team our mentality is in general is very good and I think we have uh, also many leaders uh, who sets the mentality who sets the standards, who control the standards uh, who correct if necessary so um, I think we are happy with this process, uh, but can always be better, and that has to be also uh, the approach. Give us your thoughts on the uh, full-time scores in the Scottish Premiership, Championship, League One and League Two, and of course, as uh, you heard there from Jurgen Klopp and Eric Ten Hag, it's Liverpool against Manchester United at Anfield, and uh, let's not forget St Mirren against Celtic. How's that going to go? Give us your thoughts also on that. We'll give you the answer to the quiz coming up. We'll give you one more chance to enter our competition to try and win yourself a cracking top of RB Leipzig. We've been all across Europe in the Champions League, we're bringing you more and more features uh, and as uh, you probably noted yesterday uh, in the morning Adam Binney caught up with Sam Wardrop who's a TikTok and of course YouTuber who basically uh, shows lots of young people how to train properly, nutrition and of course how to work on your skills as a footballer. Uh, he was a former professional footballer, gave it up at a young age and uh, is doing some great work and it was just great to see him and Adam get together. There's still that one-to-one -one with Alan Burrows, it's the fourth anniversary of the Gothenburg Greats winning the Cup Winners Cup for Aberdeen. I've got a one-to-one -one with John McMaster that's well worthy of you viewing. Um, John takes us through his great career, brought in the medals that he's won and talks about Sir Alex Ferguson as well. Really good listen uh, as well if you want to go onto our YouTube channel as well. Uh, so lots of uh, great content and all you have to do is hit that subscribe button and join the football family. Uh, share, subscribe and of course uh, make sure uh, that you're well aware you can stream it as well tell your friends all about it uh, and thank you to so many of you for your messages um, here I meant to say to you Tom and I don't know if you were a big fan when I was a kid growing up um, I would read uh, you know magazines the, the comics the football comics and Roy the Rovers is up for sale I just thought I'd mention that to you um, that was he, my time I here. was going to say to you uh, I thought it was but hit the artwork from the guy who actually started it all in the Tiger and Scorcher I think his family have found the artwork and the stories and they're putting it up for sale um that's my childhood. Are you into comics and that? Into I that liked stuff? I liked Roy the Rovers. I'm not. I wasn't. Uh, I wasn't into comics. I wasn't into stuff. the the soldiers and all that yeah. they're fighting. Uh, I, I just liked Roy the Rovers, and they used to do great features of mm. uh, footballers who were playing. You know, so the whole magazine was brilliant. My favourite ones were the ones you used to find uh, in the bushes when you were playing football. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not. I'm. You, you know, there was a cold chill come down the back of my neck there <laughs> when I, as soon as you went down that road, and I thought to myself, uh, we were all quick, a bonus quick, here quickly, a treasure trip. quickly. Let me get to a manager somewhere because I can see where this idiot's going with this. Anyway, um, lots of people offering their <laughs> predictions on the game as well. You see how I do that? I just, I, it's it's almost like a kipper right across his head as I move on uh, on on a point of decency. Liverpool nil, Manchester United three is what Billy thinks, and uh, at two nil to United. Uh, lots of people offering their opinion on it. Joseph thinks it's going to be two one Liverpool. Um, I think you're right, Joseph. I think Liverpool might just edge it. They're coming back to form. Uh, although by the time we get to Monday, Ham will probably come into the studios and say, "Well, talk us through United's five goals at Anfield." Um, I hope not. Uh, and. <laughs> 
<laughs> Thank you to so many of you who are right on here to the <laughs> end. Yeah, they're on, it, they're on it. Yeah, absolutely. I know, and uh, quite simply, uh, I, I try and keep them in line every now and then, as I did with Ruffy as well. It's like the, uh, you know, the master and the protege now in the left hand side here. Um, uh, what we can tell you, uh, and I think hopefully with a bit of luck, uh, Tom, we might be able to, when you look at all the scores, uh, get some more reaction from some of the managers today. If you are just joining us, Hearts had a good win against St. Johnson 3-0. Uh, Livingston lost by four goals to one against Hibbs, and fingers crossed we get the thoughts of uh, Lee Johnson as well. We've heard from Michael Beale, happy with the way they bounced back. Good first half performance, maybe took the foot off the gas in the second half. But what about that result? for Motherwell. Uh, two goals up there at Dingwall to give them a 2-0 win and uh, Kevin Van Veen he's having a good season again now he, he was you know at times I, I thought he didn't Did he score a 2 did he? He scored, he scored a 2 I mean, he, he doesn't a, Did he not score a hat-trick against him early in the season or was it last season up yeah. in West County I'm sure he did it just doesn't get it. He doesn't. Sometimes he, he doesn't move as uh, he's not as mobile as you would think for the front. But he when he gets his he's in front of he's, goals. He's, he, I don't know how many goals he scored. Maybe yeah. something about Taylor's, but it's maybe f fifteen plus. Yeah. You know, and, and again for a, for a club like Motherwell, you know that is invaluable. You cannot put a price on his goals. You know, Kevin Van Veen to score that amount of goals for a team that's nearly bottom of the league. So he's one. You, Brophy maybe one at Ross County that, that maybe keeps you keeps you away for the bottom two. That, that's why I think Kilmarnock are, are my favourites to go down, Peter, because I don't see anybody in their team that's going to score goals for them. You know how many goals Van Veen scores? 17. That's great. You know, that, and we haven't even mentioned, we've mentioned him. mentioned You know? He, he could possibly score 25 goals for Mullow. Yeah. You know, and is, is he in the mix for player of the year? And we haven't even given him a sniff, no, by the way. And know. he's well worthy of it now. As you're right, he did actually score three against... Yes. He scored three against Inverness in a hat-trick. Scored three against Ross County uh, in October. Up there. Right. Up there. Yeah, yeah. So you're absolutely right, Tom. Well five remembered. and two games up there. Yeah, and he's got, he's got five and two games here now. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, five, sorry, in uh, in six games. So he's on forum. He's banging in the goals, and they're crucial goals uh, as well. So I think... Uh, most of the Motherwell fans will be well happy that suddenly uh, Kevin Van Veen's got his shooting boots on. So a 2-0 win up at Dingwall uh, for them. I think we might be lucky, Tom, if we get off here to hear a rather frosty David Martindale uh, giving us his thoughts on that. Well, absolutely, because I, I caught up with him in midweek and he was absolutely box office uh, just offering me his insight. Yeah, and, you want to me, yeah, yeah. and we've got a good feature coming up. Germany. Yeah, I like David. He's a good lad. Um, OK, he's got a back catalogue that... Uh, hey, hey, we managed to get a... He's a good lad. Uh, <laughs> have you played in America? Um, but... Uh, the, there's always a catchphrase that everybody uses um, he's got a back catalogue but I think somewhere along the line I know Bruce Anderson did mention to me in midweek that sooner or later somebody will bite um, on David Martindale as a manager ok they lost 4-1 today it's four consecutive defeats for Livy now so let's hear what the Livingston manager makes of that 4-1 loss today against Hibernian they say that it's rare it's probably unheard of this season but I've been here I've been here a hundred times before it's a club of size, you lose games of football, but what I will say is I think their performance level since the Inverness their defeat's not been there. I think the boys have lost a wee bit of confidence in release, and it's up to me to try and get that back. I will get that back, I've been here before, so... Had a wee bit of a wobble, you could call it, but the defensively wasn't good enough. Wasn't good enough, and that's all over the park, coming from the number nine straight to the centre half. It's amazing how maybe a cup defeat uh, can suddenly derail. Everybody just loses it because the incentive is to try and get as far as you possibly can, as well as realising the importance of the league. And for Livingston, after listening to him in midweek, every point is money. Mm -hmm. and, and, and particularly that, that cup game. You know, if they win that cup game, they're in the in the quarterfinals with a chance to get to to get to Hamden. So. Ever since that game, you know, they lost uh, heavily in that game, they lost to, to Rangers, they lost to Aberdeen last week, another heavy defeat today, so he's right, it is, it is a, a little bit of a blip uh, for Livingston, but I think that shows you how far they've came, I think they're still sitting in maybe 6th or 7th position, uh, they're well clear of the bottom two, so listen, he's just, he needs a result, he needs a result quickly, just to stop the rot, um, because they've certainly seemed to have lost a lot of confidence since that Inverness game. 
I'll tell you one thing though, when you look at that 4-1 win for Hibs, I think uh, it's an excellent result, especially off the back of the bad news about Aidan McGeady, who mm. will be contemplating his future. I hope that even with a second opinion, if he needs an operation, I really do hope he gives us another year just as a, a little swan song, but I, I you don't so. see it? I hope so as well, Peter, but I, I, don't, I don't think you'll see him again at the top level. And I don't, I don't see him as, as, a, as somebody who's going to drop down into the championship well, just to play. I, I don't see that from him. Um, I think he's, I think his career's, it's, it's in the balance now. I think that's a real bad injury at 36 years old to get an operation in a hamstring. You know, and uh, he's going about through the end of the season. Has he got the hunger and desire to come back again? You know, he's been out for a long time uh, over the last couple of seasons. I hope so. I hope he comes back, you know, better than ever, and um, because he's a quality player, I love watching him at Hibs. But this might be an injury that he can't come back for. Yeah, uh, it's a big call uh, for Aidan McGeady, um, and of course, uh, we certainly hope that he can get back. I, I, you know, his performances for Hibs for me at times, yeah, I think he's been he's, such a good player. But his head and shoulders above everything that's in a green yeah. jersey. Yeah, no, he's been he's been superb. And listen, I played against him when he was at his, in his pump at Celtic. I remember playing against him for Dunfermline and Falkirk and, and Hibs. And uh, you know he was he was a tremendous player and one that we always looked out for as a, as an opposition player. So no, he's he's only had a fantastic career, but 36 getting an operation in hamstring. It's a long way back. Yeah, um, for the players who are actually playing for Hibs, they certainly stepped up to the plate today. Four one win against Livingston. Here's a happy Lee Johnson. Emotional day and just delighted that we we got the performance and the result for for Ron and for the family. Um, you know, it was an occasion I think that we can celebrate as a club. You know, it was a fantastic performance from the players, but also from the fans today. And um, I really enjoyed the togetherness, the camaraderie that I, I thought was shown from the first minute all the way through to the celebrations at the end. Yeah, every player was wearing the number 68 uh, as a tribute to Ron. Um, and I think when you look at uh, a 4-1 win, it would have been an emotional day for a lot of people. And I think to see them win so emphatically as well is great tribute. No, brilliant. It's been an emotional week for, for Hibs. You know, um, losing the chairman, the owner, the leader of the club. Um, you know, it was always going to be tough today, but 3,500 Hibs fans there today paying tribute to him, uh, which was fantastic. You know, you go and you win 4-1 and, and, you know, when you go to Livingston, it's a tough game on that pitch uh, and, and, Living and Hibs obviously have the big big crowd there. And it's important to keep them happy uh, and going, even going to go down early doors. You know, they showed character to come back from it and win the game comfortably. So, you know, th this Hibs team are starting to show a bit of form. Uh, the manager's starting to get some positive results. I, I didn't think they were that far away, even, even the Scottish Cup game uh, where Hearts won 3-0. It was never a three nothing game, and I know, I know the cup and cup games. It's all about the result, but even that day, you could you could tell that they were still, you know, playing for the manager, and uh, they're starting to get the, those results now. Yeah, um, I think there's a, a lovely little uh, cameo to that uh, interview with David Martindale. Um, it's being reported that. Uh, David Martindale was sent off today. David Marshall had asked him how long was left and Martindale actually said one minute and held up his middle finger. <laughs> <laughs> and the referee, the referee. <laughs> I know, I have to say, that's been, that true? I don't know, that's been put up on Twitter um, by... <laughs> if that, if that, I, I can't... I, I have to say, it is uh, it is true. I mean, honestly, you couldn't make it. The referee sent him off for it, by the way. Uh, that is... That's that, an offensive gesture. It is, actually. It's like Dick Campbell last night. Yeah, it's like you oh. finding books in the forest. Um, but uh, it's mental. Uh, the, the Scottish foot... Do you know what? It's the it's the country and the, the game that just keeps on giving, isn't it? Yeah, there's always something to talk about. Peter's never born. Yeah. Uh, and... Uh, I'll tell you one thing, you talked about Aidan McGeady, uh, where he might, what he might do. Do you think the Hibs might look towards Mikey Johnson? Um, you know, because Ange Postacoglu said he doesn't know what he's going to do when he returns from loan. He might be somebody that Hibs could look to. They have looked at him before. Yeah, they have. Um, and obviously he's, he's, he's pledged his, his future at Ireland as well. I know Stephen Kenny likes him. Uh, Stephen Kenny loves wingers, plays with, plays with wingers everywhere he's been. So... No, I think that he's, he's someone that Hibs will be keeping tabs on. He's over in Portugal, I, think, I believe, at the minute. Uh, I don't know if he's been playing. I think he was on the bench the other night. 
when we Stephen went over to watch him. So, no, I think he's one that, that the Hibs will be keeping tabs on. Yeah, absolutely. Well, get ready for the quiz because here he comes. He always likes to get on the last two minutes of the show uh, to tell us what we've got to do and when, and when we've got to leave oh. as well. Uh, he'll tell us when we've got to get off here as yep. well. So let's go back to Ibrox now because there he is, Shyness himself. We're delighted that Adam Binney has joined us. Adam, first and foremost, give us your impression of the way Rangers performed today. Was that what you were expecting and were the Rangers fans happy with it? Yeah, well definitely the first half. I think the first half is exactly what the Rangers fans expected and wanted. The first 45 minutes Rangers blitzed Kilmarnock. They were fantastic for large spells of that first 45 but when they came out in the second, I think Michael Beale had just speaking to him there, he said that the first half had taken a lot out of the legs of the Rangers players. They've been doing a lot of fitness work with them and I think players like Raskin and Jack who haven't played much football of late certainly felt that and that was that was reflected in the second half performance because for the first 15 minutes of that second half Kilmarnock were, were definitely the better, the better side they managed to get a goal and at that point the Rangers fans started to get on the backs of, of the Rangers players and you just think if Kilmarnock had gotten a goal at that point which they did have a penalty shout with 3-1 by the way as well which Derek McInnes wasn't too happy with might have been talking about a different game but I think over the course of it the Rangers absolutely deserve all three points because for 45 minutes they were brilliant uh, and just on that point, you, you, the fans would have been happy, Adam, with the overall result. What did you make of and what do you think uh, the reaction was inside Ibrox to that banner from the Union Bears about the need for change? Yeah, that, that banner came <laughs> came up early in the first half and the whole stadium stood up to applaud it. So it seems like the majority of the Rangers fans agree with the statement made by the Union Bears that change is needed. Um, I'm not sure at which level, to be honest, because Rangers have just changed manager recently, so I'm not quite sure what the the fans are alluding to and what they would li like to see change so suddenly, because, I mean, they're not going to change manager. And we're, we're not in a January transfer window, are we? So they can't change players either. Um, but bit of a strange one, but yeah, the, the Rangers fans absolutely in full support for the Union Bears banner today. Yeah, I think they wanted. I think the change they're talking about is changing the board. They're looking for investment. They want that board changed. They think um, that basically it needs other investors. That's what they're looking for, Tom. Yeah, listen. I think financially, you know, you look at the, the gap between the two clubs. Celtic sitting with fifty million pound in the bank, uh, and they're so far ahead of, of Rangers at the minute financially. So, I think they're looking for someone to come in with deeper pockets to, to back the manager and give them cold hard cash. Just before you go, Adam, give us your thoughts on Kilmarnock. Like Derek McInnes, um, again, has he, I don't think he expected to get anything out of there, but they're, they're still trying to get away from the bottom end of the, the Premier League. Yeah, table's starting to look bleak for Kilmarnock now. And if you look at their away form all season, it's not just today, Peter, but they've only taken two points from away matches this season. I think they got a draw back in the, the 23rd of December. Before that, it was October the last time they managed to pick up a point on the road, so if, if they want any chance of surviving or getting away from that 11th place relegation playoff spot, then they absolutely have to start picking up points on the road, so it's not looking good for them. I know you're just about to kick me off, Peter, so just want to say that I'm absolutely going to enjoy my Saturday night, 15 minutes to get up the road instead of uh, taking the two and a half hour journey back from Aberdeen, and I just want to make sure I get that in there because Kerry had been laughing all week at me for the Aberdeen trip, which ruined the night out last weekend. She's got to make her way back down from Dingwall and I was kind of hoping that that game might have been a nil-nil just to make her journey even more miserable. So I hope I have a better Saturday night than Kerry this week, Pierre. <laughs> he's, just, he's just a kind of teammate that you could absolutely hate wouldn't he absolutely. honestly he's, not, he's, he's not a team player he is all about Adam he wants to score a hat trick and get beat 4-3 <laughs> brilliant anyway listen we've run right out of time but uh, I'm going to give you the quiz answer I um, said 10 10 it was 18 David Beckham 18? scored 18 free kicks wow. it's a record that James Ward Prowse is trying to close in on thanks to Tam to Blair and Sean and all our reporters out there uh, Claire Kinnaird will have half time and full time reports on our social media channels and she'll get reaction from Jim Goodwin and Barry Robson at the end of that Dundee United Aberdeen game and don't forget also constant updates on our social media as St Mirren head to Paisley to take on, well Celtic head to St Mirren to take on um, Stephen Robinson's side, what will happen in that match tomorrow, you can find it all on PLZ Soccer's social media channels, we will be back in Monday with Ruffy hopefully you can join us then, have a great weekend. Was it comics? <laughs>